All right, hey everybody, welcome back to Aimbot. Uh, show all about FPSs and third-person shooters and other shooters in general. A uh, couple quick announcements before we get started tonight. Uh, Frame Fatales will be having its next all-women speedrunning event, Flame Fatales, from August 21st to the 27th. Uh, the marathon schedule is out. Exclamation point FF in Twitch chat or gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more info on that. Uh, and prize submissions are open, so you can check the site for more info. And uh, one and done a -thon, the marathon that I organize, uh, is coming up again, where runners would get one submission to show off their favorite run, and if they get in again, that's your only appearance. Uh, we're releasing the schedule on July 29th, so uh, please everyone look forward to that. So, we've got a pretty long one tonight, but I, I, I think this is pretty interesting. Um, Left 4 Dead is obviously a game that I played when I was younger, but I was never good enough to play it solo because the bots were too dumb for, to save me specifically. Uh, so I'm always amazed uh, when people can do things like this. So without further ado, uh, we've got Waifu with all campaigns legacy uh, solo. Take it away. What's up, everybody? My name is Waifu, and I'm going to be running uh, all campaigns solo legacy um, for Left 4 Dead 2. And if you don't know what that means, basically, I'm going to run all the campaigns um, solo. So by myself, I'm the only human player. Um, and legacy means that it is the category that we used to run. Because for like nine years, this game had 13 campaigns until like last year when they added Last Stand. So the all campaigns run with all 14 campaigns, which includes Last Stand, is called All Campaigns. And then the category we used to run, it's called All Campaigns Legacy. Um, so I'm running the one that we used to run, which is Legacy. And the reason for that is it's a lot shorter, uh, not just because of the one campaign, but because a lot of the speedrun stuff is patched in that other version. And also, it's got it's just a very unique category for Left 4 Dead. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of everything, which is what I really like about it. Um, so we're going to be starting on the first campaign, which is The Passing. And um, time can start as soon as I gain control here. Um, there's a couple of things that I got to go over that makes this run, like, really interesting. If you don't know, Left 4 Dead is a ton of RNG. This category, the world record, is two hours and three minutes. Um, my estimate is, like, two hours and 40. And if it goes really, really bad, uh, I've had runs go like 250 plus <laughs> but hopefully we don't get that unlucky i'll play, try to play a little bit safe but the reason it can go really really bad is because everything is random so common infected spawns are random special infected spawns are random tank spawns are random ob object and weapon spawns are random and uh, because of that it makes it really hard to do things consistently um especially when you're playing on experts which uh, this category is any difficulty, which means you can play as any difficulty that you want, whatever's fastest. Um, but in order to do team damage to kill the bots, you need to be playing on Expert. And there is a quirk with this version of the game. Very nice. That was very scary. I needed to get that. Uh, the quirk with this version of the game, 2091, which is the earliest version that has all 13 campaigns, um, you can only vote once per map or once every three minutes, which means that if I start the map on Expert, I can kill the bots on Expert, and then I can vote to Easy. But then the next map, I'll start on Easy, and and I won't be able to vote to Expert to kill the bots. So that means for the first couple of campaigns, I have to play a lot of it on Expert. So this first map is entirely on Expert, which means that you take way more damage from common and special infected. Tanks will instantly kill you if they hit you. Wait, how did you just run by a witch? So this what the heck? Uh, <laughs> witches are actually pretty hard to aggro if you don't like shoot them, thankfully. Um, so yeah, the first couple of campaigns are really scary because of that, but thankfully we got out of the first one. First map, super, super scary. There's almost always a tank spawn on that map. And since you have to play on expert because of the votes, um, he insta-kills you. So I got lucky and he spawned in a spot where I could actually avoid him. Hello? And uh, he didn't wreck me, so that's good. So now I'm on Expert on map 2. Map 2 is really, really hard, so we want to vote to easy, but the reason we played on Expert for that whole last map is so that we could kill the bots and then vote to easy. And the reason you need to kill the bots is because if you get to the end of the level, if you get to the safe room, and the bots aren't with you, then you have to either wait for them to catch up or wait for them to die. Otherwise, it won't let you progress to the next map. 
And that is really, really, really slow. So when I do something like this, where I kill the bots, then vote to easy, it's super important I don't die. Because if I do, then I'll start back at the beginning of the level and it'll be on easy. And I won't be able to vote for like another three minutes still, which means I have to do the map on easy with the bots. And uh, like I said before, that's really slow. So the first five campaigns are like that. And then the other not, or eight campaigns after that are much more mellow. Um, so we're organizing the run in a way that we do all of the hardest stuff first and all of the maps that we need bots for so that we can kick all the bots with a trick in Dark Carnival later and not have to worry about them for the rest of the run. Um, but that means all of the difficulty is front-loaded. And so the first couple of campaigns are really difficult. So the first one is the most RNG heavy because to survive this section, you basically need a boomer bile and an adrenaline. I got the adrenaline, which is the more important one of the two. I might be able to get away with having a pipe bomb. We're still gonna look for a boomer bile. Nice, okay, thank God. <laughs> uh, they're all RNG drops, so I'm just kind of praying that I get what I need. Um, oh my God, hello, witch. That was scary, I almost shot her. So we throw the bile so we can distract the commons. There's a lot of water, and then you don't move fast in water, but it's really easy to die, especially if you get hoarded by a bunch of commons around you. So you want a bile for the first set of water so that you can distract the commons and you can hopefully bunny hop through the water, which I'll explain bunny hopping a bit more when I get the time. And then the second set of water, there is like a really low hanging roof and a hole where a bunch of commons come out of nonstop. And so you can get stuck there and just get completely trolled for like a long time until a special spawns that kills you. So you really need the adrenaline so that you can walk without the, the slow movement speed from the water. If you don't have the adrenaline, you're just trogging through this at like one half movement speed. And every time you get hit by a common, you get wrecked. Okay, thank God. Jockey's very scary. Since I'm alone and I don't have any bots, if I get grabbed, it's GG, it's over. I gotta do the whole map again. Um, which makes the run really an edge of your seat ride. Ooh, thank nice. God. Okay, that was the two maps I was the most afraid of. So those going well is really good. Um, it's not always worth it to kill the bots. Um, in some instances, it is safer just to keep them with you because either the map is too difficult to do alone um, or, you know, the way that you would have to cycle the votes makes it not worth doing. This is one of those. This is the passing finale. We're going to have to collect a bunch of gas cans to fill up a generator that's going to open this bridge for us. And uh, we need to cross the bridge in order to finish the campaign. But we're going to have to wander around and there's a non-stop horde the whole time. And we're carrying gas cans, so we can't really shoot zombies. So that's where we're going to keep the bots with us for this. And... If we were to vote to Expert to kill the bots, then that means we would have to do this finale on Expert without the bots, and that this makes it a complete nightmare. Uh, so we're looking for Adrenaline. Nice, found one immediately. It's going to help us to pour the cans faster. We need to collect 10. And uh, if you get motion sick from FPS games, I would suggest maybe not looking at the screen for like the next couple of minutes. Uh, well, you can look right now, because I'm going to get trolled by these bots and they're not going to save me, because that's always what happens. <laughs> Oh no, they actually saved me. Okay, cool. Sometimes the bots are just, they just are completely ignorant and will do nothing and will let you get smoked or jockeyed or huntered like I'm right next to them and just stand next to you and just like laugh at you and be like, haha, you got grabbed. Uh, sometimes like that, you get lucky and they actually save you. So I'm going to do some color called can juggling where I'm going to carry all 10 of the cans to the end of this map. Uh, by myself, because bots can't carry cans, and the best way to do that is by juggling. So you can pick up the cans and then throw them and then melee them while they're in the air to make them fly further. And so I'm going to be just like doing that over and over and over again, switching between a bunch of different cans so that I can move them all fast. But uh, if you don't like FPS, like fast moving cameras, you should look away for like the next minute and a half probably. I'll let you know when it's over, because I got to carry all these cans by myself. And I'm hoping that the bots will cover me and kill any commons or special infected that are trying to kill me while I do this. And uh, thankfully the bots can't shoot the cans. So I don't have to worry about them causing a chain reaction. Oh wait. And yeah, blowing I was gonna them say, all up. Did these blow up? Oh. 
They can blow up. If you shoot them, they'll blow up and catch on fire, and then they'll spread to each other, and then you blow up all the cans on accident. So a misclick here is really bad. Uh, thankfully, the bots can't shoot them, though. Okay, the can juggling is over. So we use the adrenaline, and that makes it so that we can pour the cans like twice as fast. Don't know how that works. I guess it means that you just squeeze the gas can harder <laughs> and just like pour the gas in really fast. Because <laughs> it definitely uh, shouldn't affect gravity, I would think. Um, and so that's going to be good enough to open the bridge, and then we're going to go across and go into the next map. And so you can see in the in game chat here, um, my. Uh, this is the text, so like the passing is selected, the sacrifice. That's called a cycler. Um, we're going to be in 13 campaigns, and so switching from one campaign to another is something that you want to do optimally. And so we have a cycler, which basically lets us use different console commands um, with one button press. So I'm going to be cycling through which campaign I do next. And the next one we're going to do is the sacrifice. I was going to say this. So we just got to make sure so we get the fade out. Oh, the bots. See, the bots are trolling. This is why you don't like bots. This is why you kill them when you can't. I was gonna say the gas can one is like chronologically in the game one of like the last ones, right? Yeah, um, and the sacrifice is like just before it as well. Um, but there we go, we did that one. Uh, we did the passing for the harder campaigns done with no deaths. That's pretty pog. Uh, there's only ever been one run of this. Ca there's two runs of this category, I think, that have ever been done deathless because it's so RNG heavy and so long for a Left 4 Dead 2 category that it just hasn't been done. So uh, I wouldn't expect to see a deathless run here. I'm definitely going to die sometimes, but hopefully the deaths will be after the first five campaigns because after that, the deaths really don't lose that much time. I was um, say, this is going to be a third. Thorn sacrifice now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That would be sick. I do have my splits up, so if I PB, you know, I'll know. Um, so this is sacrifice. This is one of the few maps where it's actually going to be worth it to just keep the bots and uh, to get them to teleport. So the bots, if they don't know how to path to you and you're like too far away, they get obstructed or like um, you're in an unpathable position, then they'll teleport. And so that's why you see me doing like these weird lines on like the railings and stuff. And I'm gonna like stay on this boat because I'm trying to get the bots to just like, oh no, I can't path to him and then just teleport because if they don't, they're really slow and they're gonna be super far behind. But I need the bots here because I really don't want to play this map on Expert. Um, there is a tank that's locked inside this um, train car, and you have to kill it to progress. Nice, they all teleported. Perfect. Um, and so having the bots be on Expert, obviously, makes it way harder to kill the tank. Um, and having the bots here with you and just killing them all together is a lot faster and safer. So we tanks done -zo. Easy clap. Um, but now we don't need the bots anymore. So I'm gonna vote to expert. And we need to kill the bots for the next map, so I'm going to put them down. And I wanna make sure to shoot them enough so that they bleed out by the time I get to the end safe room. Um, but now it's really scary because, of course, I voted to expert. So it's stuck on expert until I get um, to the next map and kill the bots again. And if I were to die, then I have to restart the map, and then I'm an expert, and then I gotta show the backup strats, which are very scary, so I don't want to. Uh, so let's hope that we don't die. Thankfully, they like to, uh, the commons like to focus on the downed enemies, or the downed teammates. They're enemies in my book. Um, <laughs> so hopefully they'll just all gather around there. But I do have to worry about specials, and on expert, specials are really, really scary, because they aggro super fast, and especially smokers, they just they just on it's on site when they see you. They, they got we got beef, right? They don't mess with us. So uh, if there is a smoker, then he's just gonna shoot his tongue immediately and give us no opportunity to run away at all. And we don't have a sharp melee weapon at the moment, so really not much we can do. We just kind of shoot at them and pray they die. Nice. But we, we made it, so that's good. Is I was gonna say, uh, shoot, I had a question and then I forgot what the question was. If I think of it again, I'll ask. Uh, sorry. <laughs> For sure. Um, so someone in the chat asked how I move so fast. So I'm doing this thing called bunny hopping. Um, if you've ever played a source game or like seen someone speed around a source game, it basically like if you're holding W, your movement speed is kind of capped. But if you let go of W and then strafe in the air by holding A or D and like swinging the mouse in that direction, 
then you actually uh, gain speed. And if you jump the instant you land, you can maintain that speed. So I'm doing that. It's called bunny hopping. Um, Left 4 Dead is a special case for bunny hopping because unlike other source games, you actually have to time the input perfectly as you land um, to gain the speed. If you, this game runs on a tick-based system, which means 30 times a second, the game runs checks for inputs and um, all sorts of stuff. And so if you don't jump on the same 30th of a second that you hit the grounds, excuse me, Charger, then you lose all of your speed. It's not like you lose some of it, you lose literally all of it, which makes bunny hopping really hard in this game. And because of that, um, the only way to consistently bunny hop is to do a singular input, the tick that you hit the ground. And so that means that, unlike other source games, you can't just like buy and jump to scroll wheel and spam it. You have to actually time it. So every single jump I'm doing is using the space bar. And um, every single successful B hop is a one well, so think frame perfect, but at 30 FPS. I'm playing at like 300 FPS, but the tick rate system is 30. Mm. So every single jump is frame perfect 30 FPS, um, which makes bee hopping really, really hard, but still very powerful. That's awesome. so mean. Yeah, I was going to ask if you could just bind it to scroll wheel, but man, that's, uh, <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So like if you were to bind it to scroll wheel and you jumped every single tick, then the game would register it as you just holding jump. Mm. For instance, so okay. so you have to manually time. You can use any input. Like there are like one or two runners that you jump with scroll, but they time it so that the first input for the scroll is the first tick that they hit the ground. Right. right? Um, and so you're going to see a lot of bee hopping throughout the run, but in a run that's this long for Left 4 Dead. It's not going to be as important. It's more like an accumulative time save, right? In shorter categories, having like perfect B-hop lines and stuff is going to save way more time, but... Not dying is like the biggest thing in alls, really. So it requires a lot of adaptation. Speaking of adaptation, I need to find a propane tank. Oh, unlucky. That's okay, I have a bile at least. There's a trick on the next map. This is Sacrifice. Normally, the Sacrifice ends with uh, Bill sacrificing himself, jumping off of the bridge that we were on in the last campaign so that he can reactivate the generator and save everybody. Um, but before you can do that, you have to activate three separate generators that all have their own tanks and hordes attached to them. And uh, it's this big thing that takes a long time, but in actuality, you can um, just do a speedrun skip to get up to the top of the bridge right at the beginning and then sacrifice yourself immediately um, skipping having to do all of the finale stuff but in order to do that we have to do a trick called a common jump and common jumps are notorious for being rng basically when oh i almost got it basically when common effect are climbing on geometry and you jump on their head uh you're their climbing speed is added to your jumping speed like that, and so it can shoot you up into the air. And while doing that, you can actually get so much height that you jump all the way up to the top of the bridge. And then you can activate the ending of the finale by pressing that button there. So basically, the game thinks, oh, he's done all three generators, and now he has to sacrifice himself. And so now I can jump down here and sacrifice myself, and Bill dies, RIP, and run to the next map. <laughs> Uh, so I remembered what the question was. Uh, is the reason you have the the on screen text for like stuff showing up? Is that so you can tell when like specials spawn? So you're not. Yes. the uh, The closed captions we have full captions turned on, and that's because um, audio in this game is very bad, and so sometimes there will be jockeys or hunters or smokers or chargers or tanks and stuff. They just don't make any sound whatsoever. And uh, when they spawn, if you're within range, a lot of the times the captions will actually pick it up. So you can tell what specials are alive, you know, and roughly where they are by seeing those captions, which is super, super nice. Um, so normally on these campaigns, you only see me down the bots, um, but that's because they need to be fully killed by the end of the, uh, the safe room. Or sometimes there will be like many events inside the level uh, that they have to be fully killed for. And in Dead Center 1, 
you just jump out of the window there, right to the second floor, which skips a lot of the level. And you need the bots to be fully dead to activate the elevator. And so here we're going to get Coach stuck in the elevator. Um, so that we can get on top of it. And now we're going to ride it down. Um, and there's luckily a little hole on the other side of the other elevator. Um, that is normally used for verses, but in campaigns it's there as well. And what normally happens is when you get stuck inside this elevator, you have to open the door and that causes a horde to spawn. Um, but you can skip the horde and actually skip opening the elevator door if you do that. Oh my gosh, Jockey. Um, so thankfully, like the fire is still here and stuff, but no horde. Uh, you can still get an RNG horde, of course, because everything is random in this game, but makes this way easier, especially because it's one of the maps you have to play on Expert. So it's kind of a big deal. Cool. And so I've been looking for resources. I've been looking for a bile and an adrenaline, which is exactly what we got. We're going to save the adrenaline for the finale, because this is another gas can pouring finale. Um, and we want the bile for um, saving the cola on this mission. This is uh, one of the missions where we're starting off on expert, but then we're going to be switching to easy. It's really important we don't die, because this is one of the bigger time losses in the whole run if you die here. Uh, because the level's really long, and there's no really good spots to get the bots to warp at the end of the level, so... Hopefully, it'll all go good. A right, nice bonus adrenaline. Hopefully get some b-hops. The, the burn bile is really, really nice. Um, it's the best of the three throwables. The three throwables being uh, Molotovs, Pipe Bombs, and Burn Biles. That's because um, the Burn Biles actually don't spawn... They don't... Oh my, hops. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they don't kill the commons. Because there can only be 30 commons on the map at a time. That's the regular zombies. Not the special ones that are chasing me right now. There are going to be 30 of them on the map at a time. And so... If uh, they're distracted and really far away from you, that means that they're not in front of you, stopping you and trolling you. So we actually want to try to not kill too many unless we absolutely have to. Um, so like, let's say you're trying to run away from a big horde of enemies. If you throw a pipe bomb, yeah, it'll distract all the comments for like 10-15 seconds, but once the pipe bomb explodes, it kills all of them, and then they respawn in front of you. Same kind of, same kind of thing for Molotovs, and since Boomer Battles don't kill the commons, they let they actually distract them for a much much longer amount of time, um, and that's gonna be really useful for this event here. We're gonna have to go get the cola, deliver it to the gun shop guy, you know, equivalent exchange, all that, um, and then run to the end of the level. But we have to carry the cola, and we don't have any bots with us, and we're by ourselves, so you know, we're just going to have to beat a bunch of common infected to death with the cans of cola if we don't have a bile. Um, and when you open this door, a horde spawns, as well as all of the special infected on the map, like, despawn, then respawn. So if they were far away, or if they're on a cooldown, or anything like that, um, they're not anymore. And so you can expect them to be right on you, right about when you leave this area. Um, there can only be two on the map at once. Um, in easy and uh, non-realism modes. Once you're on expert, there's three at once, but they kind of queue up their spawns, right? So, like, there might only be two on the map, but if you kill one and it's been too long since another one died, then another one immediately spawns, right? So it feels like there's more than two, but there actually is only two. And so because of that, like, I saw a spitter on the closed captions, right? I don't want to kill the spitter, because the spitter can't grab me, right? We have a hunter, though. Hunter is something I want to kill because he can grab me. And so ideally you want like a boomer and a spitter because, yeah, they can do stuff to you that messes you up, but not anything like oh, a full wipe does, like a charger or a smoker or a hunter. Um, so I'm just going to be like ignoring them for the most part. Nice. This is a really good yeah. one so far, honestly. This is probably going to be real. <laughs> um, does healing yourself at the end there make the end screen come up faster? Or is that just like... No, it's the opposite, actually. So um, when you're in a safe room, there's it's on a cycle. So every full second, the game is checking for the level to end. And so if you start an action like healing with a med kit before the level trigger check ends, um, it will automatically end it. So I can get a little bit of healing for absolutely free, no time loss, if I start the heal after I close the safe room door, and then the fade happens after that. Okay, interesting. Um, so... That's like the perfect spot to, to get the heals off. Um, so this map, this is one of the scarier maps in the run. It's on Expert. 
And Maul is a very scary level. Um, because there is a crescendo event that you gotta run through, which is basically a non-stop horde until you press a button to stop. And it's really common that you get double special spawns in this map in particular, and of course also a tank. Um, so, you know, very scary. And lots of narrow hallways as well, of course. Excuse me, sir. Don't mind me. And so double special spawns is uh you're not usually allowed to have two of the same special at the same time. Like if there's a charger, another charger can't spawn, right? That's just kind of to make it a little bit more balanced. But for some reason on specific maps, that just doesn't apply. And this is one of them. So sometimes, like we had a charger earlier, but we can have two chargers at the same time. Because the game likes to troll. Uh, so this is a crescendo. I broke the glass. Now there's endless commons coming. I got really lucky though that tank spawn was actually good. Tank spawns will reduce the amount of common effect of that spawn. So Getting a tank early like that is good because it'll make this event easier. Excuse me, sir. And that, and that, that tank off. doesn't despawn, right? It just stays there? So it's... No. No, the, the tank will just chase you to the end of the level unless it gets stuck or loses line of sight for too long. So if it loses line of sight for too long, you'll hear the tank music stop, and then it'll say tank death in the closed captions, and then you'll probably get a horde immediately because that's usually yeah. how that works. Um, but yeah, so if you get a tank and successfully pass him and there's no way for him to like, you know, cut shortcut to you, then you're good actually. And that's like really nice because it guarantees you won't get another tank. Um, thankfully in Left 4 Dead 2, you can only get one tank on a level. Not true for Left 4 Dead 1. <laughs> <laughs> in Left 4 Dead 1, you can get multiple tanks and they can teleport. So if you run too far away, like you turn a corner. Oh no, there's the tank that I just passed. So now we did that level on Expert so that we could start this level on Expert, down the bots, and then vote to Easy. Because doing this event um, on Expert is very scary. We're going to collect all the gas cans. It's kind of the opposite of the passing. Um, the reason it's scary on Expert is because um, all that's left are specials. So it's RNG where the cans are. Um, but if you down the bots in the safe room on this version and then start without them, the event doesn't start. So the horde's not going to spawn when these elevator doors open and stuff, but also it doesn't count if I pour the gas cans until I press a button here. That's a fail safe to start the horde again. Um, so basically the finale doesn't start until I press that button, which is really nice, and that's why I need expert so that I can kill the bots. But after that, I don't want to be pour like pouring the cans and then get smokered or something, right? So you want to be on easy to try to mitigate that risk. Um, especially because if I die now, then I gotta, I can't down the boss, which means I can't stop the horde from spawning. And then I gotta do it normally with all the commons and stuff. It's just a big nightmare. So I gotta collect eight cans. Um, I got bad RNG, so I had to go to the third floor, but it's like medium bad RNG. So it's not that big a deal. Um, and as you see, there's like there's no commons, nothing. The event hasn't started yet, really. Um, the game basically thinks I'm still in the safe room. Excuse me, ma'am. G, please move. Thank you. I got this one. Um, but specials still, still do spawn, fortunately. So I do get to watch out for those. They like to tend to stay on the bots in the safe room, thankfully. So you want them to be alive as long as possible, just to kind of draw aggro. I'll grab like an extra can or two here just to be safe. Can juggling warning, by the way. Uh, it'll be a lot more than passing this time. I got one. I got it. Thankfully, I have an adrenaline. I I'll be able to pour these cans faster. Haul ass and get gas. As soon as you start the event, it causes specials to spawn, though. So you got to be really, really fast and careful. You're that jockey. This is, one, is this one of those like reset points if you don't get a uh, an adrenaline? You're just like... Not quite. But it does make it a lot scarier. Just trying to kill that jockey just to be safe. I probably could have got away with just YOLOing the cans. I, I grabbed way too many, but whatever. It's fine. Cool. Next, on to Swamp Fever. This is really good. So there's only two two campaigns left where we have to play some of it on Expert. Um, Swamp Fever and Dark Carnival. Um, but then after that, it's just all realism easy with 
no bots for the rest of the run. So it'll get a lot easier after that. But we haven't died yet. So that's really good. Um, Swamp is one of the maps that really showcases why um, it's so important that we play on specific versions. Because Swamp has an event right at the beginning on the first map that takes about two minutes for this ferry to go across the water. And there's no way to skip it on this version of the game. Um, at least no consistent way. In earlier versions of the game, you could do a trick called Infinite Stumble, uh, where basically you start stumbling with a propane tank, and then you can just rotate your weapons and stumble forever, and that causes you to like hover over the river, skipping the event. It saves about two minutes. In this version, that trick is patched, so you can't get across the river unless you get a tank. And if you're lucky enough to get a tank, you can try to have the tank hit you across the river to skip the event. Um, which, as I'm sure you could imagine, is not the most consistent thing ever, especially since tank spawns are completely RNG. Um, it saves about two minutes. So in main campaigns, where you do just the main five campaigns, uh, you play on that version where you can do that. And the reason you don't play on that version for this category is because it only has those five campaigns. So you can only play on one version for the entirety of the run. You can't switch versions. And so for all campaigns legacy, you play on the earliest version, that has all of the campaigns, which would be 2091, which is what we're playing on right now. So I guess I should explain. We get a tank, obviously. Unlucky. But we can't tank boost across this. We gotta wait for it. Um, but that means I'm gonna get to a god spot, and I can explain a little bit about what god spots are. So basically, pathing in video games is done by something called nav meshing. And nav meshing is basically like a thing that you apply to a uh, collision in a game that tells AI how to path on it. So it tells them like how to climb over something or like how you can walk on certain things. Um, but not everything is nav mesh by default. You have to manually nav mesh everything in a game, especially in a source game. So there are some spots where the nav meshing is either broken or just non-existent, like the one I'm in right now. And so if you stand there, the AI just has no idea how to get to you. And so they just kind of stand around. Just, this is mostly used in finales because uh, if the common infected are just standing around like this and they're out of your line of sight for long enough, then they'll just despawn. And that actually counts as a kill when you're trying to finish finales. So that's a really, really convenient spot right there because we just kind of need to survive for two minutes until the float comes across. That's such a clever way to show it too. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, that was scary. Uh, I just got a jockey force field. Uh, as Patrick would call it in the community. It's uh, basically, you like, I don't know what it is. It's like an old version thing. No one really knows how it works, but sometimes when you melee a jockey, when they try to jump on you, they just instantly die. And I got really lucky and that just happened. So we're good. Um, now the problem is though, normally uh, in a speed run, like in main campaigns, you would skip this. So nothing would spawn on the other side of the lake. Uh, but now they do because we did just have to do it normally. Like, if you were to tank boost, the same thing would apply. There would be nothing on this other side. Um, so, really important we don't die here, because otherwise we'll have to do that whole thing again. And have to wait for the ferry to come across and whatnot. As you can tell, this run is full of... Uh, I really hope we don't die here, otherwise it's a huge time loss. But uh, it's mostly in the first five campaigns, and we're on the fourth one, so we're making good progress. No deaths yet. It is really nice that even when the AI or when the bots like respawn, that you don't have to, like that doesn't count as them being alive. Oh yeah, that would be awful. They can, okay, they control you though, and like let themselves out of a closet, what? or like, uh, yeah. So like they're stuck in the closet, right? And if you want to save them, you could like open it and they'll all come back. But then you're on stuck on easy and you can't vote to expert, right. right? So like, now you just have to have the bots for the rest of the level. Um, but sometimes like you could like blow something up that blows open a door and then they're free or like you op you like pick up an item that's close enough to the door that the game just kind of gives it to you and is like here they're free and uh that's why i don't grab items next to that door right there on that last level because <laughs> it's very likely to open the door even though you're not even near it that's that's a troll <laughs> that's ridiculous yeah is thankfully it's like right near the end of the level so if that happens it's not a huge deal but there's definitely some worse spots. So this is Swamp, and Swamp has a lot of water. Water is really annoying, as we saw on the passing, because, well, you, you move really slow in it. Um, that only is the case if you miss your B-hops. Well, I got really unlucky. That's almost always an adrenaline spawn, but for some reason it was a health kit. Um, 
But yeah, if you have an adrenaline, it negates that slowdown. And so we're looking for adrenalines a lot, especially on this map in Hard Rain. Those are the two where there's like a ton of water. We're going to be looking all over the place. I'm going to throw this by all because I got a board and this is annoying and I don't want to die. Um, and we're going to need to use that adrenaline. Oh my god, hello tank. I did not see you. You just came out of the woodwork, literally. Oh, I missed the jump. Panic. This is fine. So I was going to try to skip this plane horde by using adrenaline speed and then jumping over the top of the wall. Uh, but I was scared. So I didn't make it. Nice charge. <laughs> <laughs> this run is basically objective survive. Uh, the whole time. Panic ensues. But yeah, if you actually keep your bunny hops perfectly in water, you don't lose your speed. This is what I was trying to say like five minutes ago, where I got sidetracked by almost dying a bunch Go. of times. Um, which is really cool, except for the problem is the ground underneath the water is uneven, and you have to time the jump inputs perfectly, and you can't see the ground. So I mean, just good luck, I guess. I mean, some people can do it in certain spots. Yeah, but just like, know. Yeah. It's that easy. Just memorize the, the ground underneath the water and the timing for it. All right. So um, usually we grab a melee weapon, but we opt to stay with a pistol on this campaign because we want to do a very specific amount of damage to the bots on the finale. Should be the next map. On this map, we want to do a very unspecific amount of damage to the bots. Just enough, you know, kill them. And then we got to worry about tank spawns and of a horde, because this is another crescendo map where we're going to be activating a thing and then never ending zombies. And, but we're going to just be running right past the thing we're supposed to wait for. Yep. And there's almost always a tank. So there he is. And we're on expert. So he insta kills us. Um, I say there he is, but I actually have no idea where he is. There he is. And they actually have insane like predictive aim with their rock throws on expert so you want to be very wary of that speaking of uh, sir don't mind me so yeah normally you're supposed to like wait for this bridge to go down and stuff but actually when you activate that an invisible wall over here just disappears so you can just jump over this rock and just leave which is pretty nice. And then just head to the end of the level. And hopefully there's no hunter or something in the safe room. But that'll lead into why we have the pistol. So uh, there is a mechanic in this game called a stuck warp, where if you get stuck, like you're stuck inside some collision or something and you can't move, after 10 seconds, it'll teleport you to the nearest player. Um, and that's just like, you know, if you're playing with your friends and you get stuck somewhere, you don't want to be soft lock, right? That would be unfortunate. Um, so the game does that. We can abuse this to get into a really good god spot. So what we do is we down Nick with the least amount of damage possible, so it gives us the most amount of time before he bleeds out. And then we're on a run. We gotta go fast because we need to go start the finale, then get stuck and teleport before he dies. Um, if we don't then we'll have to just do the finale normally um, because there aren't really any good god spots inside the events. But if we do it correctly, then we should teleport back to him in the safe room um, after the finale started. And that'll just make the whole area outside of the intended finale area a god spot. So this whole area I've been in this whole time will have no nav meshing. Excuse me, sir. Which means that we get the faster finale ends um, without having to do anything crazy except for, you know, this whole nav mesh meme with the stuck warp. So we gotta start the events and then we're on a timer. Close the safe room door so hopefully no one like beats the heck out of them while they're laying on the ground. We're at the plantation house. We throw a bile, that'll buy us a little bit of time on the common infected. And make them despawn faster. 
Because when you throw a bile on a nav mesh that's not there as well, it does the same thing as when you run a nav mesh that doesn't work. So the commons just kind of wander around and don't know what to do. Um, and so that buys you a little bit of time so that by the time you get stuck and you warp like this, <laughs> the commons are already on broken navs, so they don't know how to find you. Yeah, so we don't need them anymore. Their use uh, has been used, and so they're gone now. Um, but very useful bots. That's like a perfect example of how having bots is faster sometimes, um, which is why we uh, you know, have the bots for this map. It's one of the reasons why we do it early. Um, but besides that, this is a wait out finale, so there's two hordes and two tanks that we gotta kill, um, and we're currently doing it. This is the uh, the Sigma Sigma male way of doing it, I guess. You just let's let the game do it for you. You know, just they're just gonna despawn, just intimidate them so hard that they just leave the server. I do not see them. As you can hear, the first tanks just spawn. Yeah, no, they're 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 spawning where they're supposed yeah. to spawn, but they're like, where the heck is Waifu? I have no idea where this guy is. And so they're like, all right, I'm gonna switch servers, I guess. And uh, we just gotta wait, really. That's the first tank. Once we hear the second tank, then we know it's time to go. And we gotta actually, we gotta run across the area again to make it to where the escape is. Um, and while you're out in broken navs or turned off navs, uh, the special infected can still see you, and they still can know how to path to you. Sometimes they'll get stuck walking on walls and stuff, um, but a lot of times they can still see you. So it's not completely safe. I can't just like go to the bathroom right now, as you, like that jockey would have killed me, right? Um, but I can, you know. Do some art, maybe practice my backwards b-hops. Got like a minute or two here, we're just waiting. Is a is ABH in this? Or is it still does it still count on the 130th no. tick system? It's still the 130th thing. Hey, this game with ABH should be very interesting. But you can't do like sideways b hops and backwards b hops if you're a gamer. Um, my backwards b hop game is rusty. I haven't done swamp ILs in a while. There's the second tank. You can hear all the music. Ba, 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 ba. It's funny, the specials kind of line up in the same spots every time, too. When you're in that god spot, like that dude's always there. Almost every single time. If there's a smoker, he's standing right there. Charger! Oh my god. I was going to say, there's almost always a charger at that door, too. <laughs> that would have been a very bad death. We good, we good. And then we're going to head into Dark Carnival, which is the last map that we're going to have bots on. Hallelujah. Um, but now we're switching to Realism. And Realism is a mutation mode that uh, makes it so that bots don't respawn in, bo in uh, like closets. Um, there's no glow around objects anymore. There's three special infected spawn um, spaces on every difficulty, not just expert. Um, and witches are uncrownable. And the reason we do that is because there's a bug on the Left 4 Dead 1 campaigns where um, the gap between the tank spawn and the horde spawn in the finales doesn't exist if you're playing on realism. And so that saves 20 seconds every finale across like eight campaigns. That's like two minutes. So it's actually a pretty big time save. Um, but you might be thinking, this is a Left 4 Dead 2 campaign, so why are you playing on Realism? And that's because uh, this game plays you on a local server, even if you're playing in single player mode. And that means that things that happen in the server um, will stay there even if you switch maps. So right now we're on one server, that's Realism Expert, and we're playing on Dark Carnival with these bots. Now, if I were to like do something like kick the bots, for example, but then vote to change maps, um, the bots would stay kicked even when we load onto the next map. That's exactly what we're going to do in the finale of this campaign, is we're going to kick the bots and then stay on the same server. Oh, I almost got the fence up. That's okay. We're going to kick the bots and then stay on the same server. And so that means the rest of the run, we won't have any bots, but we'll be on realism. And that means we could stay on easy the whole time. Uh, which will make the run substantially easier. But because of that, that means that we got to play with Realism on and on Expert for this campaign, for a lot of it. Um, which makes it one of the harder campaigns for sure. 
And that's part of the reason you do it so early, I'm just gonna... to get it out of the way. Yeah, and so Dark Carnival is the only map that actually has the trick that allows you to kick the bots, which is why you do it last out of the hard ones. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, you need to you need the bots for the other campaigns, right? So you do those first, and then you kick all of mm -hmm. the bots. Unlucky. There's Expert Smoker for you. Dang. Well, there's the first step. I was hoping. Yeah, most likely map to die on is is definitely one of the Dark Carnival maps. Yeah, you're hoping for no ah, death run. That would have been Me sick. <laughs> that would have been really cool, but... Uh, you know, I was expecting like four or five by now, so we're good. Sorry, guys. <laughs> such a hot idea after all. Hell, it got us this far. That's okay. My hops weren't that good, and this is the best hop and best map in the game for bunny hops, so I get another try. So, special infected, um, they actually don't spawn immediately when you load in. They There's a timer in game, so it's 35 seconds. After 35 seconds after you leave the safe room, that's when specials spawn. And so that's really important because um, when you encounter specials is like super impactful for how you have to deal with them. Like if you run into specials in a really narrow hallway, you might have to kill them, right? It might be really scary. But if you run into them in a big open area, that's not a big deal. Um, and so that is going to entirely depend on how good your movement is. And so that means that like the higher levels of play are playing like an, almost an entirely different game, which is really, really cool about the speedrun. You almost have to relearn it every time you get better at movement, especially since the movement in this game is so difficult. Speaking of, hopefully I'll I can... Yo! Nice. nice. That's uh, fence hop. Just go really fast. That's the trick to it. You just hit all of your b-hops. Hopefully I get a slow pop here. Uh, nah, not really. That's a nice. That is fine. I'm going to grab this, actually. There's a trick you can do. Um, if there's a smoker, like last time, you have a sharp melee weapon, you can actually look at the ground and uh, break the smoker tongue with a sharp melee. And you can actually do the same thing with propane tanks and gas cans. So if I get a smoker here, I can just look down and drop it. That'll break the tongue. So when you're playing on maps an expert, it's actually a really good idea to carry around a propane tank, if you can. Um, just in case. Especially just in case because of witches. Witches on these realism maps are very scary, because you can't crown them. If you don't know what that means, crowning witches where you kill it with one shot, point blank. And that's usually how you deal with them if they're like... Sometimes they could literally spawn like in the safe room door, for example. Um, and so what do you do if you can't crown them? Um, we're playing on a launch option called LV, or Dash LV, which is low violence mode. Which is why all of the zombies just like kind of disappear when I kill them. Instead of there being gore everywhere and stuff. That's not because I'm on GDQ or anything. That's just because um, that's, well, one, it's good for frame rate, uh, which is nice. And then two, on LV, witches don't really have a death animation when it comes to explosions. So if you hit a witch with a propane tank explosion or like explosive ammo or anything like that, they just instantly disappear, which is hilarious and super useful. <laughs> because like, hey, there's a witch at the end of the safe room. You know, you just throw a propane tank at her and shoot it and boom, your problem's gone. It's amazing. That's what I like about uh, this this category, All Campaigns Legacy. It's It literally shows everything. It's got like, Maps with bots, maps without bots, it's got warps, it's got uh, low violence, it's got expert, it's got realism. Coach. It's all over the place. It literally shows like every single thing that's in the game, like, except for, you know, the other campaign that's in the game. But everything that was in the game before that update, at least. Hello. Speaking of everything that's in the game, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't go for this, so I'm going to try to do a skip here, a tank boost. There's a carousel here, and uh, the carousel, you know, you don't really got to activate it. There's a bunch of commons that come. It's this big deal. Got to wait for the door to open, but you can actually skip the whole thing um, by having the tank hit you. Okay, well, so I forgot to vote back to easy. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering, going, so, you know, I was like, you're an expert. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> That just shows you how easy the game is. That's fine. Uh, that death would have lost a lot more time if uh, I had voted easy. <laughs> but I also wouldn't have died there. So, yeah, 
Yeah, you can't do that skip on, easy, on expert, uh, because when the tank hits you, you die. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh well. We get another chance. Maybe we get another good tank spawn. Oh, no we didn't. We got one here. That's okay. I was expecting deaths on Dark Carnival, so... Hello. Excuse me. Pardon me. I really wanted to show off the tank skip. I got so busy with my commentary, I forgot to vote to easy. That's okay, though. I won't have to vote ever again after this campaign, so... No more oopsies like that. Well, you know, just go for it again. Easy. Just get another tank spawn in the exact same place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excuse me. Get off my head, sir. Please. Will you die? Jesus. There we go. This man's invincible. He's got more HP than the tank. This is one of the downsides of playing Left 4 Dead 2 when there's no double tank spawns or anything. I got that tank really early in the level, which means no tank, tank boost. Sad. But that's okay. There is another campaign later in the game that has a two minute time save on a tank boost that if we get it, if we get the tank there, I'll definitely go for it. Let's just to see if I can show it off. Yeah, so this is what you normally do. You're lame. You go over here, press the button. Otherwise, you fly up into that tree. <laughs> it's sick. Fly up into that tree and just walk over the invisible wall. There's a jockey right now. It's scaring. There he is. I saw him. We're good, probably. So, normally I'd vote to expert, kill the bots, you know. Do that every couple of maps. This map, I'm just gonna stay on easy the whole time. This map is not worth it. Expert on this map, expert coaster, no shot. I ain't doing that. Hell no. Nah. Because there's a good, there's a good spot for the bots to warp to you right at the end of the map. And the chances that you live if you play on expert for the first part are like very slim. So I'm just gonna play on easy. I'm just gonna run and pretend like this is just a normal, you know. Online server, you know, just run, pa run past all my teammates, not help them at all. Hope I don't get vote kicked. It's like a free weekend all over again. Every online group I ever played in. <laughs> yep, yep. Just, sorry, you got like, oh, you're down. That's that sucks, man. Uh, well, you'll be alive in the next map. It's fine, right? Yeah, this this section in particular is very, very scary on expert, especially this drop down that we're about to have here is. The timer just so happens to line up that like right around now is where all the specials spawn, as you just heard, like three spawn. And they like to spawn right under the drop down where you can do absolutely nothing about them. So, uh, like we said with the broken navs before, um, that also works with the bots. If you're on a broken nav mesh and the bots don't know how to get to you, they'll teleport to you as well. So we'll be using that here to um, help get the bots past the coaster without actually doing it. Because this coaster has a million and a half ways to skip it. But this is the way that works on this version. Very iconic and cool trick. Coaster skip. Um, but you might see the bots just like randomly teleport to me during the trick. Hopefully, don't fall to their death. That can happen sometimes. This is a big meme. Yeah, there's one, but there's another spot where they can pull warp over here, right at the end. But look at the ground, because they can't warp if they're looking at you, or if you're looking at them. And hopefully they warp. There's one. Where are the other ones? Now the upside, the other thing is we're on realism, right? So I can't even tell where the bots are. There's another one. I can't tell where the bots are because there's no outline. Uh, I think everyone's here. Fog. Um, and this is, now we can vote to expert. You guys and so we start bad. Barnes on expert, and they get to vote easy afterwards, which is a huge relief because Barnes is even worse for being on expert than Coaster is. So definitely want to play Barnes on easy. Um, and that means that we need to have voted on expert on the previous map, like we did there. So that when I kill the bots, I can vote back to easy and then. Pray that I don't die. <laughs> a 
Barnes is really scary because it's uh, got a, one of the hardest crescendo events in the game, which is an event where just commons just never stop spawning and you gotta run past them uh, to get to the safe room at the end. Um, and the map almost always has a tank as well, so those two things combined can be very, very scary, especially on Expert Realism. Let's see here. Dang, first try. Nice. Yeah, that. That's nice because those common jumps are RNG. That charger, he said, screw that. I'm out of here. He just ran the other direction. Oh, now he's back. Yeah, so we're going to try to do a common jump here. For safety. Nice, okay. This up here has broken nabs, so I can stand up here and the commons won't be able to get to me. Thank goodness. I don't have a throwable, which is really unfortunate. I was hoping for something. Uh, but it'll be okay, hopefully. Just need to make it to the safe room once this gate all the way opens up. I don't want to kill these commons because if I kill them, they'll respawn in front of me, right? So I just want to leave them alive um, for as long as I can. And then go when the gate's about to open. My B hops are not not on it right now. There's a witch literally right there, of course. And a hunter. Alright, we made nice. it. <laughs> cool. So I've been saying uh that this is like the hardest map of the run the whole time, basically. This is the last actually super hard map. Um, this is the finale for Concert. It's got that trick where we're going to kick all the bots. So basically, if there are players or even special affected um, alive and sitting in the safe room, when you start the event, it actually kicks them from the server. And this is a trick that used to work on online matches, PvP, you name it. You could kick people from the server if they were standing in that part of the safe room and you started the event. Um, fortunately for us, that means that we can use it uh, to kick the bots from our server. And since the game is hosted on a local server, um, when we vote to switch to the next campaign, we won't have any bots. Unfortunately, that means that we have to do it on Expert Realism, which is absolutely terrifying. Especially since I don't have a sharp melee weapon. Oh, that's good. Well, at least we died at the beginning of the finale. <laughs> <laughs> we have the bots already kicked. So that's the big deal. Now that they're gone, they're gone forever. And as long as I don't make a new server, then we'll be fine. And I can grab a sniper, which is good. Sniper is really good for, uh, for holding out in the finale. We were in a god spot, but like I said, the specials could still get you. Me, sir. Pardon me. Funeral are coming through. One of the things that makes this map all really, really difficult is that you really can't do much. You just kind of sit in the god spot and pray that the specials don't absolutely annihilate you. Um, and you can actually, even if you're in a god spot, get what are called bad tank spawns, which is tank spawns that just have the tank spawning in a spot where they can see you. And that means that the god spot doesn't work on the tank, and then you have to kill them manually. And if you're playing on Expert, tanks have 8,000 HP, which is like four times more than they have. Otherwise, that was unlucky. We got boomed, so getting boomed in the finale makes it like 30 seconds longer. And now there's a smoker, and I have no idea where it is. And somehow the tongue broke, thank God. <laughs> Panic ensues. Yeah, geez. I think Gaben just shined upon me in that moment. I don't know how, why that tongue broke, but it did. I, m I must have shot it, I guess. I couldn't see. I was boom. Yeah, so ideally I'd have a sharp melee, because I could just break the tongue, but... Didn't end up finding one, so... I just have to... to pray, you know? Is there ever a point at which, like, if you die, you could just vote switch to easy on this? Or do you need a vote in the yes. next map? Yes, after three minutes. 
after three minutes. So it's, the vote timer is on uh, every map and every three minutes. So three minutes since I called the last vote to kill the bots. But I have to be careful because the way I switch to the next map has to be a mm. vote. Um, otherwise, I'll switch servers. So like, after that death, I could probably vote to easy right before the helicopter gets here. But if I do that, then I can't vote to switch to the next map, which would mean I have the bots again. If I, well, I would, I would end, and then I have to go to the main menu and start a new server, and then I get the bots back, which would defeat the purpose right. of kicking them. Um, so I kind of just have to play. My rule is like, first death, just play it on expert again. If I die again, try to vote to easy at the start. If I can, then stick on easy, and then I'll be able to vote again by the end of the finale. Because it's, it's about three minutes long. Um, so I only died once, so I'm just going to keep it on expert. Because I don't want to get to the point where like, oh, well now I'm on easy, but I can't vote to the next map. Which would really suck. But yeah, and then after this, we'll be on realism, which makes the comments harder to kill and makes it so that you can't crown witches and all that stuff. But we only play on easy the whole time. We won't have to kill any bots, which will make it much, much less stressful. Is there any difficult? Is is, is there any differences in any of the characters with like voice line length or, or things like that? No, not really. Um, I mean, they, they all have their own voice lines and stuff, but no, nothing is tied to dialogue in, in this version. In the newest version, there are a couple of NPC dialogues that are random, and they have different lengths. Um, and you're waiting on that. But besides that, I mean, not really. Um, Rochelle is a little bit shorter than all the other survivors, but that only really comes into play in co-op. Um, because in co-op, you have like grenade launcher boosts and all this cool tech. Um, and her being shorter makes her harder to boost uh, because you see her less. Like if you're looking up at the sky like this and someone walks into you, you're gonna see the taller person mm -hmm. first, right? So that makes it a little bit uh, harder to boost her shell. Goodbye, Tank. <laughs> cool. Made it to Hard Rain. The first of the campaigns where I don't have to play an expert anymore, thank God. Um, Vote to easy. That's the last vote I got to do besides switching campaigns to the rest of the game. Um, so in theory, it should get a lot easier right. now, right? But we still have like eight campaigns to go. Uh, so, you know, it's still left for dead. I mean, it, there's all sorts of things could go wrong. But a lot less can go wrong when you don't have to play on expert. You don't have boss. And realism isn't something you can vote off. Like, you, you have to play with it on? It is yeah, not, okay. unfortunately. It's a server setting that gets set when you start the server. So, like, actually, the command I used to switch to um, Dark Carnival, it was disconnect, which just sends you to the main menu, and then start a new server, Realism, Expert, and then Dark Carnival. So, like, it is a completely different type of server, and I can't switch off of it. Got one adrenaline spawn the input. That's good. We're going to need that later. Uh, hard Rain... This gimmick is water, just like Swamp Fever. Really running out of gimmicks over at Valve, I guess. Um, but also backtracking. So it's all of your favorite Zelda dungeons in the same Left 4 Dead campaign. <laughs> backtracking and water levels. Um, so that means that we're going to be looking for adrenaline spawns and not actually using them because we're going to need to use them on the way back when we actually uh, need the adrenaline. Get through the water fast next to the boost tank. Later, nerd. At least I made it. So no adrenaline in the safe room, which is unfortunate, but we did get one in the ambulance. That's good. We're going to pick up a tier two shotgun here, and we're going to be on the lookout for a propane tank. Uh, this is Hank Hill's favorite Left 4 Dead 2 campaign, um, and it's got one of the cooler tricks in the run. It's pretty difficult, um, but very, very cool. When you're falling in this game, there's a couple of things you can do to reset your fall damage. Um, in co-op, you can go idle and edge bug. Um, but in single player, there's only really a couple ways. Um, you can hit an explosion near you on your way down by like throwing a pipe bomb or something. And that's a pretty good way, but it's really hard to do consistently. Or you could like explode a boomer next to you while you're falling. Or there's like a couple things like that. But what we're going to be trying to do is not die of this tank. 
And then look for a propane tank, because we're going to use that propane tank to break our fall and skip an event here. Um, nice HP, by the way. <laughs> uh, excuse me, charger. Another thing that can stop your fall damage is actually a charger charging into a wall. It'll, like, stun you and stumble you. Oh my god, Jockey Force Field. Okay, we're fine. Um, yeah, good luck setting that up to work consistently, though. So still looking for adrenaline spawns. There's the white beauty we're looking for. Propane and propane accessories on their way. Lots of witches in this map, but thankfully they're really hard to aggro unless you actually shoot them. I just want to scan the area. There's an adrenaline. That's not what I wanted to do. Up here. Excuse me, sir. Pardon me. Speedrunner coming through. There's an elevator here that we normally have to activate and wait for it to come to the top. But that spawns a horde, and it's really slow. We're just going to do this. There's a gas station. So I actually shot the propane tank out of the air and caused the explosion, which reset my fall damage and made it so I didn't die to that fall. Um, I aimed really far below it because this game's hitboxes when stuff is in the air are really bad. It's actually like kind of on purpose set that way so that when you're playing on a bad multiplayer server with a bunch of ping, the hitboxes in the model kind of like meet in the middle, you know, and it becomes more accurate. But when you're playing on a solo server on your own computer, obviously that's not a big deal. Um, so the model and the hitbox are distended really far, um, which is why if you ever notice that you got to melee super early when a hunter is jumping at you or a jockey, that's why. A lot of times you have to melee even before they pounce because the hitbox is actually like two to three hunters lengths in front of the model of the of the hunter. And jockeys are especially bad with this because um, their hitbox is like vertically descended. So when you melee them, you gotta go like this. Otherwise, they'll just go right over your melee hitbox. Which is why if you ever see me like fight a, a jockey, I'm like... Because that's the only way you can get them. No way to avoid riding it back up, unfortunately, though. Um, but now we're just backtracking, except for now it's even better. There's water. But we have some adrenaline spawns and some good routes that... Nice hops that make it so we don't have to go through the water as much. This way. Ah. A very common question I get asked a lot is... Do you crouch when you bunny hop in this game? The answer is no. You should like never ever crouch when you bunny hop in this game. And here's why. You don't go any faster when you're crouching because you're always technically in the air when you b hop. You never actually hit the ground. So even though it seems like you go a little bit higher, it doesn't actually translate to more acceleration um, because you're never actually touching the ground when you b hop technically. So you're gaining acceleration every tick. And the other reason is if you miss a b hop, when you're standing, you get set your speed gets set to the default walking speed, which is like 250 units or whatever, something like that. Um, if you are crouching and you miss a b-hop, your speed gets set to zero. And so your acceleration to get back up to walking speed is really slow, and that can really, really mess you up in some spots. Um, you'll notice it more when you hit your first couple hops because you go a little bit higher. Um, but it doesn't actually translate to going faster. So I do crouch when I b-hop sometimes, but it's only when I'm in really specific circumstances where I need to get like a little bit more height to make a jump, or I'm trying to like change the, the spacing of my bunny hop so I can set up for a jump or something like that. Um, otherwise, you should always be standing so that when you miss it, you aren't so punished that you like instantly die. Just a fun fact for people out there. People are really against learning that fact for some reason. I, I don't know why. They're, they're like, no, dude, I swear. Dude, crouching, it, I hit all of my hops way better when I crouched. It's like, okay, dude. I, I, that's just not true, but but <laughs> go ahead. Like, do what you want. Ouch. This is why adrenaline is really important in water. That is a uh, Jakaki as well. I'll, Oh, oh, nah. oh, this is fine. <laughs> yeah, I was completely boned there. 
Uh, that was my fault, though. I should have waited to bait the tank a little longer. Uh, that's one of the cool things about this run, is uh, while it is extremely RNG heavy, as I'm sure you can tell, um, most of the time, if you die, it's your fault. If you were just better at the game, you could like adapt more, you know, and, and like outplay the situation. That's not always true. Sometimes you're just completely boned. But I would say like a good solid 90% of the time, there was something you could have done if you had more foresight. You were just better that you could you could actually like make that livable. And some of the really high level runners of this game, like Mobile Tech or Patrick, like you definitely see that. It's really really impressive. Just like how you just sit there awestruck, like how did he just survive that? Like what? That is crazy. And that was not one of those moments for me. So you're welcome. Uh, Hello, Tank. Oh, speaking of uh, truths about the game, oh my god, hello, uh, that people don't like to hear. Um, you know how it's like, oh, you have your flashlight on? That's like, it's going to alert commons faster and it's going to alert witches? This is a complete fabrication. It's a, it's a total placebo mechanic, actually. It's just marketing. I'm so mad that. about that. Like, you can just sit it. You can just like stare at a witch and just flash flashlight, nothing will happen. It's just proximity, really, and um, like sometimes shooting. Um, I think that only applies to sitting witches that the flashlight actually does something, but it definitely doesn't do anything to comments. And standing witches, they don't care at all. You just stand right next to them, flash the light at them, and nothing happens. Which is pretty funny. Also, another thing with that, uh, the director, this like insane computational machine that like dynamically balances the game's difficulty for you. Also a complete fabrication. It's basically just a set of randomizers that are tied to timers. Like, 35 seconds after you enter the safe room, exit the safe room, spawn specials. Which specials? Random specials, but they can't overlap. It's like, when do hordes spawn? It's like, well, it's random, basically. Like, if you actually look at it, it's all just completely random. <laughs> it, it, it's literally just timers and randomizers attached to each other, which is kind of hilarious. And, must I add, marketing genius. Oh yeah, absolutely. Way to make it seem like uh, you have like this insane AI director, like this insane AI that you, your team has built over the decades and bought it. Nah, it's just random. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely set up as like, it's just random. you know, uh, the, the puppeteer overseeing, you know, the whatever campaign you're doing. Yep. But nope, it's just random. There, there's like a couple of small things, you know, like uh, earlier I got that adre that uh, uh, health kit when I thought it was going to be a, an adrenaline. That's because it spawned in as an adrenaline, but the game realized, oh, you don't have a health pack. And so it replaced it with a health pack because I forgot to grab a health pack in the safe room. There's like a couple of little small things like that, but it doesn't overall like balance the whole game around how well you're playing or anything. Otherwise, the game would be a lot easier when you speedrun because you just immediately have three players die every map, right? So <laughs> you would think the game would take it easy on you, but uh, it seems to be otherwise most of the time. Anybody hear me? That yeah, game ruined, I'm sorry. But not really, though. It's much more fun when you realize it's random, you know? Because then you're just like... It's like you're playing a roguelike. Yeah, our... Uh are the maps randomized in any way, or is it just, like the same layout every single time, but like the the infected are different? Yeah, so most maps are the same every time. There are a couple of maps that have individual features that are randomized. Yeah. If that makes sense. So like Dark Carnival Barns, there's like that first area that I went through after killing the bosses, switching to easy. Sometimes there's a gate there. Just random. You know, if there is, then you got to go around. Uh, the biggest one is probably Quarter, or uh, Cemetery on Parish, which is one of the maps we'll be coming up on in a little bit here. I think it might actually be the next map, the next campaign. Um, there's like four different pathways, and there's like 20 seconds worth of time saved on the best path versus the worst path. Um, for the most part, that's not as big an issue. It's mostly the special infected spawns, the common infected spawns, and like tanks and witches and stuff like that. Yeah, Parish is the next map. Cool. So I'm going to show that then. So, we are playing on 2091, which is not the earliest version of the game. The earliest version of the game is 200. 
Um, and so that means that there are some stuff that's different, some stuff that's patched, like the infinite stumble on Swamp. Uh, definitely the Parish, probably the most neutered map in the whole game. There's a lot of skips on Parish normally, but most of them are patched in this version, unfortunately. Um, still looks very cool, but it's one of those things I really like about Left 4 Dead. All the categories are very different. Even like the 13 versus 14 campaign, all campaigns runs, very, very different runs because of the versions that they're ran on. Um, like, for example, the 14 all campaigns, all campaigns run, which is the one that's played on the newest version of the game with Last Stand. Uh, that one, you can vote on every single map unlimitedly forever. So you never have to worry about um, playing on Expert. You know, you can just kill the bots every single map and then vote to easy. Uh, another thing that's different is there are no broken nav meshes in the finales. So that means you have to do all of the finales normally, like you would in a casual playthrough. Um, and that just makes it way slower. But because of that, this run and that run are very different runs, which is really, really cool. Like every single category in this game is like completely different. Even the individual levels, like if you just run one campaign, like there is a, a individual uh, version that you want to run Dead Air on. Because Dead Air has like specific tech that only exists on this one version. And so, you know, that's cool and all because it makes every single run different. The downside is, uh, if you get really into running the game, you might have over like 100 gigabytes worth of different versions of Left 4 Dead 2 installed. Uh, but, you know, that's what external hard drives yeah. are for. That is nice that like there's the rule that you can't... Um, it, it, that like all runs are on one version. Because, man, yeah, changing versions that would be, be such a pain. really annoying. Yeah, could you imagine like switching versions to the optimal version for each campaign for every single campaign? They're, they're, you switch like six versions throughout the run. I mean, they're on four delays <laughs> too, so. <clears throat> yeah, you, you switch versions yep. mid-run? For, for certain runs. Oh man, that's yeah. unfortunate. Sounds like it's time for a rule change. Uh, it's, it's only for the really bad ones. Um, th there's oh, just like, fair a, enough, fair um, enough. like a, a one to max level run, switch versions like three times. But the red takes oh, like 10 hours. See, yeah. So. But yeah, okay, yeah. it's not too bad then. Oh my gosh, I got griefed. The commons walked me off the edge. I was going to do a little skip here to go over the fence um, on the commons, but she took me for a ride. Excuse me, sir, pardon me. That dude's climbing the fuck, the porta potty. He's trying to go to the bathroom and the door's locked. The other guy code brown. Excuse me. So unfortunately, the skip to skip this event is patched in this version. So we just gotta sit in a corner over here and wait for it to end. I think it's pretty short. This is not a broken nav, but the commons just have no idea how to get here. <laughs> They're like, what? How the, what? Oh my god. That was scary. <laughs> the hunter just behind the corner. Just chilling. Specials can spawn in the safe room, by the way. Not a lot of people know that, but they they it's great. Sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, well, this is hard level. Thank goodness I got like this 15 second load screen so I could chill for a sec and then charged. Like you already closed the safe room door, you're just in there chilling. Just Does it let you end the level with a, excuse me, with an infected in the safe room, or do you you like have to kill it? No, you have to kill it. That actually happened to me today earlier. I was on hard rain in a run, and I closed the door and I started healing, and I'm like, is the level gonna end? And then I was like, oh my god, and I panicked and I realized there's a charger in the safe room. <laughs> and I like walked around the corner and he almost killed me. There we go. Jeez. It's one of those telltale signs that you're about to get screwed. That you close the safe room door, start healing, and you're like, man, this is a really long... Uh, I, like, hit the very end of this... Uh, I, I miss the bus, you know, for better yeah. analogy. You know, the frame roll is, like, taking forever, and then you're like, wait a second. I'm about to die. Thanks could spawn the safe room, too. That's pretty good as well. I have seen that happen when I, when I played the game. 
Yeah, it's a real funny. Yeah. Haha, uh -huh, it's Steve's some moment. gifts. Yeah. Funny Left 4 Dead 2. We're saving that adrenaline from a couple maps ago, so we can see here in the water. Can't be hop, the ceiling's too low. We got lucky we got the tank where we did, because uh, it could have been here. And cars can get hit by tanks and insta kill you. This makes this section really scary. Even on easy, they insta kill? Oh, yeah. Oh, hello there. She, she was just waving at me. See that? Just <laughs> like, hi! <laughs> So this is the RNG pathing on Cemetery. Let's see what RNG we get. Not worse RNG, that's good. Ah, uh, dang, lost my B-hops. I think it's actually best RNG. Hog, let's go. Yeah, so there's four different RNG paths you can get on Cemetery here. Uh, they have you go different lengths around the area. This is best RNG, nice. Unfortunately, I didn't keep my B-hops, but that's okay. Not having a best B-hop day today. Excuse me, pardon me. Oh look, Chikaki in the safe room. Thanks, thanks, well, game. Unpleasant. I think I was slow. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have spawned in the safe room right next to me. And that you're not supposed to be able to spawn where you're looking, just out of sight. But they could spawn really close to you as long as they're out of sight. And that was just that 35 second timer rolling Hello? to where it spawned one. E so it's a 35 second timer. So I left the safe room there. Timer starts. 35 yeah. seconds. After that, um, then it's based on like cooldown versus like how many specials are alive. And like, it's like 35 seconds are over, it'll spot all three because I'm on realism. And then after one dies, there's a short cooldown. Like if you ever played versus, it works the same way. Okay. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. The short cooldown. And then another one is spawned in. And then, you know, so like if the cooldown expires because they take too long to kill them. Then they'll spawn immediately, otherwise there's a timer, you know. Um, so this is Quarter. Quarter is one of the harder maps in this part of the run because lots and lots of specials and very zigzaggy map design and specials can just climb over walls. So just because you like got away from the special now, it doesn't mean he's not going to just climb over one wall and he's in front of you again, which makes it very scary. Also, there's an event here. That we used to be able to skip in a ton of different ways, but now the only way to skip it is to hit some sick crowd chops or to common jump. Wow, okay, amazing backup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that common jump is really RNG, so that was good. Uh, nice climb. I hope you enjoy your stay on the roof, Tank. I thought I was going to hit the crowd chop, and then I was very disappointed. And then I hit the common jump immediately. I was like, oh, okay. Basically, didn't Intended. lose any time. Yeah. I really wanted to shoot that gas can, but I really couldn't. Bridge. Stop bombing us. Excuse me. Pardon me. I went in the safe room? Okay, we're good. <laughs> this is fun. This run's going pretty good, honestly. I mean, I just jinxed it. I'm gonna die like six times now. But I mean, those deaths in Carnival, are really the only yeah, I mean, thing. I think you only had what, like that was two deaths bad. so far, two or three. Yeah, we can just keep it two deaths the whole run. Maybe I'll still PB. Uh, I believe. I got really good RNG here. I got a bunch of adrenaline spawns. This uh, finale is basically literally just run to the end. It's one of the hardest ones casually, but in a speed run, you, the spawns are the most scripted out of any map in the whole game. So it makes it really, really easy, especially when you're used to just reacting to RNG spawns all the time. Having the spawns be scripted just makes it like very, very simple to run past them all. As long as you don't stand in the back of a truck for like 20 seconds like that. There's always a tank on this map and he always spawns in the same area, but in randomized variations of the same area. And the whole thing is flat basically, so it's really good for B-Ops.
And the special infected almost always spawn on the second floor there, so we're already ran past all of them. Um, they can despawn and respawn in front of you if you get too far away. That shouldn't really be a problem on this map, as they'll just kind of stay behind us. Dang. I hear the tank, but he's going to pay us no mind. The cars he can hit into us will instantly kill us on every other map except for this one. For some reason on this one, they, they're like, okay, there's always a tank here and there's always a bunch of cars, so it'll be a little easy on you, and it only does half your HP instead of all of it. Oh, nice. Very nice. But uh doesn't matter because tanks AFK wasn't paying attention. He didn't watch the speed run before. He has no idea what's happening. Just another game of verses to him. He's gonna go complain on Reddit about it. Is there still a pretty active community for versus around this? Um, there was forty-five thousand players during the free weekend wow. this weekend. Yeah, I mean that was like double what it normally is, but still, that's that's a lot. Well, perish done. On to no mercy. Uh, we actually this weekend um, on. Saturday, I hosted an event on my channel at twitch.tv forward slash waifu uh, where we collected all 101 achievements in Left 4 Dead 2. Um, it was the whole, it was like 20 different runners and a bunch of hosts, and it was a really, really awesome event. Um, we did it in about 17 hours and we raised $5,000 for a really awesome charity. Um, and we actually got Valve to make it a free weekend specifically for that event. Um, so if you got the free weekend this weekend, you're welcome. But also, uh, yeah, it was a super cool experience, and Valve is really, really awesome for doing that. I just wanted to shout them out. And, you know, I mentioned, if you guys didn't see that, it's on my Twitch channel. There's a the VOD to it, and working on getting it uploaded on YouTube as well. Yeah. It was, it was really cool. Run. So we're on our mercy. Um, so we're going to finally start seeing that realism kick into play. Um, like I said before, realism makes it so that the finales are 20 seconds faster from the Left 4 Dead 1 maps specifically. Um, and that's why we're playing on realism for the rest of the run. Because you can't switch realism mid-server. Um, so it's really not going to affect too much, but the Left 4 Dead 1 maps are the maps that are most likely to have witches spawn in the safe room door. Don't ask me why, but it's really, really common. So we might see some of that here. Also, they have some pretty brutal skips on some of them. Uh, this map in particular has a really hard common jump, which would be going for to skip the event here. Me, pardon me. Got them to climb up this side. Ooh, nice first try. Very clean. Very yes. I mean, these common jumps are free, right? I've, I've literally never seen you miss them. <laughs> <laughs> They're completely RNG. Um, the climb animation that the common infected does is RNG. And the animation that they give you changes the amount of speed that you get. And also the, um, the speed is also random on top of the variable of like what animation. So you just, you're jumping like the instant, like a b-hop, the instant that the common is coming into contact with you, and that'll give you upward momentum. And some of them are more easier than others because like the common's always path in a way that makes it easy to jump off their heads, or um, the collision is at a perfect height that it makes it so they always have a specific climbing animation that makes it easier and stuff like that. But um, that one is pretty annoying because the commons can climb from like six different angles at the same time and you need them to climb from that one specifically so you can make it easier. And if they hit you, then you get the slowdown and you can't get the, the jump and stuff. Bonk. If you get really lucky, you can get a tank to punch that open and it saves like 15 seconds, but last, we were not that lucky. You can actually use a grenade launcher to blow it open in this version too, but it's a it's a trap. That time save is a trap. You, you don't go for that in all campaigns. This run is too long to risk for a 15 second time save. Because if you have a grenade launcher, well, you don't have a shotgun. And uh, 
That is very scary. Because the grenade launcher kind of sucks. And you'd have to carry it all the way there just to blow open the door and then hope you get a shotgun afterwards. In earlier versions, you could actually just cut it open with a sharp melee. It's some sort of weird bug that happens. Like, they, the way they program breakable doors, they actually have health. And they, like, forget to make it so that you can't lower the health with certain actions. And so they over they overlook it, and then all of a sudden you're punching your way through the wall and stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask, is there a reason you're using the shotgun just personal preference, or because it's you've been determined to be the best? Shotguns are just objectively the best in, like, almost every situation. Because they have great crowd control, they're really good at killing specials fast, they do tons of damage to tanks. Um... And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about it. The only thing they're not good at is range, but you're flying across the map at like a million miles an hour bee hopping most of the time, so range isn't usually an issue. And some of the holdout finales where you're like in a god spot and you need to kill commons and stuff, it's better to have like a sniper rifle or like an AK or something because you're just standing still and you need to kill commons far away. Um, but other than that, you always want a shotgun. And the shotgun doesn't really matter as long as it's a tier two, like a fully auto one. The XM and the spas are basically identical stat-wise, so that's a question I get a lot. But yeah, they're basically the same gun, uh, just with a different skin and sounds. So, there's a little event here where we gotta call the elevator down. I'm sure people are pretty familiar with this. But, but you're not familiar with that. This is not a god spot, but it is very similar to that spot we were in earlier. Um, on Parish, where they don't really know how to get to me, but they could definitely path to me. So the commons will just kind of gather up at my feet, worship me real fast for a little bit until they run out of energy and fall over and die. Because um, you actually, as you've seen with the common jumps before, if you stand on a common's head, they die. And so they'll get so together that they push you up far enough that you spontaneously stand on all of their heads at the same time, and then they all just fall over. <laughs> which prompts another horde of zombies to spawn. Uh, but specials can still definitely get you, so you gotta be careful about that. This makes this hold up pretty scary. They kind of like walk up to you, like curious about you, like a dog or something. They're like, what is this? Like, um, That's fine. Rip that charger. Rip elbow though. So I'm gonna jinx myself because this run's going so well. There's a chance that a special infected spawn will spawn inside the top elevator door. And if that happens, the elevator door gets stuck. And the door will open on my end, but it won't open on the other side. And I'll just be stuck in the elevator. And I don't even really have a way to kill myself because I don't have a Molotov. <laughs> so I would just be actually boned. I've seen all campaigns runs that like that. We're, we're just going to believe uh, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. I mentioned it, right? Yeah. So it won't happen. There's no way. Get out ahead of it. There we go. All Yay, right. it opens. Yeah. Oh, there's our tank. That's actually a pretty decent spawn. I want to get knocked off the map, though. The cocky? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, boomer. Look, which almost in the safe room door. Here, I'll try to show it off. Goodbye. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. So if she was in the in the door and I couldn't pass past her, that's what I would have done. I'd just thrown the bile or thrown the yeah, pipe bomb at her. Is with low violence on. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, just disappears. The which is just gone. That dude had shoulder pain. Oh. Bam. Pardon me. There's the landing pad. How did I thread that? That was sick. So we're gonna get to use a little bit of a grenade launcher on this map. The mercy no mercy god spot's pretty good. It has a little bit of a unique property to it where you can actually 
mostly hear or see a lot of the common spawns that happen as they spawn. Um, just because you're in a god spot doesn't mean that all of the commons will despawn instantly. They'll, they have to like take a second or two to despawn. And that means that if you can see them and kill them before they despawn, it's actually faster. So we're going to grab the grenade launcher and sit in here, which is the god spot. And if we see a common, just shoot them. Um, because that'll make them die faster and make the finale end faster. And the grenade launcher just happens to be really good at this. Like, these guys would eventually despawn if I just put them off camera, but it is faster to kill them. But we still get the safety of the god spot, which is nice. I think Col uh, Crash Course is next. Uh, that'll be fun. That map's only... T that campaign's only two maps long. But the second map is very scary. It also has a potential for a lot of time saves, so... A bit of a, a coin toss map. So someone just, someone were to start learning this game, is it, would you suggest learning like individual campaigns first or just trying to string a whole run on like easy? Yes, definitely individual campaigns first. So like, um, the category that like, so main campaigns, which is the main category that most people run, which is just Dark Carnival, Dead Center, uh, Swamp Fever, Hard Rain, The Parish, main five the game came out with. Um, that's ran on 2.0.0, which is the earliest patch of the game. Um, if you're interested at all in speedrunning the game, Download that patch from the speedrun Discord. You go to speedrun.com slash lefferted2 and then join the Discord and then you can find the download for that there. Um, and then just learn an individual campaign. That's what everyone does like to learn. They like start with whatever your favorite campaign is out of those. Um, I would suggest Swamp or Hard Rain. They're some of the easier ones. Um, but really any of those five works. Because the great part is you're playing on the patch that it's done in main campaigns. You learned one of the campaigns. Now you know one fifth of the run. And uh, it's a lot more digestible because it also has like some leaderboard. It's got all these, all these strats and stuff. Um, but you get to take in just that one part of the run. And it's perfect uh, because that's exactly how you're going to do the run if you were doing it in like a full main campaigns run or something. Yeah, because nothing carries over between campaigns, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just a fresh start. Um, and in main campaigns, you don't ever kick all the bots. You kick all of them except for one. Um, so the only difference is on some of the campaigns, you would have three bots instead of one. But really all that changes is you take like one or two extra seconds to kill them at the beginning of each map. So it really is like exactly the same as it would be in main campaigns. For all campaigns, it's a little bit more complicated because a lot of these campaigns were not playing on optimal versions, so there's different strategies and stuff and like realism memes and all that stuff. All campaigns is something that you learn when like have a good time in mains and you're like, I want to do something that's gonna suck. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Personally, all, Alls is my favorite because it shows off so much of the game. And I really like, what I really like about it is since the game is so random and the category is so long, you will never get a good run. So you can just run it forever without getting tilted to time to like small time losses, right? You're not like, Oh man, like, dang it, I missed a B-hop. Like, I lost 15 seconds, now I'm gonna reset. Cause it's like, dude, the category is like, two hours long. Like, you probably have a couple of deaths in your run. Like, there's so much time, like, you never reset to stuff like that, right? Um, which is what makes it really fun for me. There's always the possibility of PB. Until so you can become a god gamer uh, and have like a 203. But even then, there's still lots of time saved. Like, you, this run, in theory, could be like 155 or even lower. But you just have to have like insane RNG for two hours straight and also play perfectly. And this is. Which is just like never. This is time to game time, right? So loads don't matter. Uh, yeah, time without okay. loads removed. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's 203 with loads removed. So, I mean, it's a little bit longer than that in real time. But, yeah. It's not that much longer, though. The lows in this game are pretty short, thankfully. Because there's a lot of them. Uh, but they're pretty short. And the leaderboard manually retimes every run. So you don't even need a timer on screen. Console and PC are on the same leaderboard. Just uh, submit a run. You know, just your, your video recording of you doing it. You don't even need to have, like, live split setup or anything. It's like really approachable. Now, 
The speedrun itself? Not very pushable <laughs> at all. Extremely difficult. This is definitely the hardest game I've ever learned in my life. Uh, but it's also my favorite because of that. Um, but yeah, not the most accessible to pick up and play, but we make it as easy as possible. And I think it's worth it because it's really fun. But you got to have some nerves. If you get mad really easy, maybe not the game for you. Because uh, definitely like, wow, that was entirely not my fault. There goes a couple of minutes. <laughs> But I think that's kind of the fun, honestly. Yeah, so we're on the Crash Course finale now. This campaign's only two maps long. And I got a Boomer Bile. Extremely important. This is the most important throwable pickup in the whole game. Um, because there is no God Spot on this finale, except for if you have a Boomer Bile. Um, and the Boomer Bile is going to be used to have the common effect to open a door, but the God Spot's behind. So I shot that alarm car. This is actually pretty new tech right here. I shot that alarm car because. When you shoot cards that have alarms, that causes a horde to spawn. And that horde takes up the same spawning location that the finale horde does. So if I have that horde overlap the start of the finale, when that horde ends, the horde on the finale ends. So that means that I can actually skip the first horde of the finale, saving like a substantial amount of time if I'm able to start this finale while that horde's still going. Um, which is a pretty new time save. We actually found out you can do the same thing with tanks. Like if I got a tank spawn before the finale, I can keep it alive until the next... Oh, well, there's a tank spawn. So I guess I'll, I gotta go for it. Uh, I should try to keep the tank alive until the normal spawning time of the tank in the finale. Or, you know, whatever it takes for me to not die, that's what I should do. I'm stuck on the cabinet. And I'm spit. <laughs> yeah, cold stream's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can, in theory, in theory, you know, uh, kill the tank at the same time as the other one's supposed to spawn, and then that skips the tank too. So that makes Coldstream really unique. Or not Coldstream. I don't know why I keep saying Coldstream. Uh, this Crash campaign, course. Crash yeah. Course, is what it's called. Crash Course, uh, really unique because you can skip half of the finale, like right at the start, uh, if you get really lucky and set it up correctly. Yeah, that tank just owned me. So that was not going to happen. I can reroll the the car alarm though. That car always has an alarm there, which is what makes it viable. Oh, I, I guess I was going to ask: when you die and restart, does it give you the same, uh, like whatever you? Does it save whatever you started with? If it's like the second or third or uh, whatever yes. map? Yes. Okay. So like, whatever I started the second map on, when I die and restart, that's what I have on the second map. Excuse me, sir. I got a tank and the horde again. So I guess it's fate. I just gotta go for it again. Um, but yeah. And all of the RNG is rerolled. So object spawns, enemy spawns, all that stuff is rerolled when you die. Um, but here I'm gonna throw a bile at this door. That should hopefully get the commons to beat the heck out of it. Yep. See that? The door opens. The god spot's behind that door. So I needed that bile so that I could get the commons to beat it open. I can't beat it open myself or shoot it open. And you can't like bait a tank into punching it open or something like that? Uh, me maybe could in theory, yeah, but good yeah. luck. I hate common infected. I hate special infected too. So unfortunately, unlike Left 4 Dead 1, oh, this is great, we got some time. Unfortunately, unlike Left 4 Dead 1, the tanks won't actually try to kill you when you're hit by a special. So there's a whole bunch of overlapping beams happening here that I'll explain. Um, maybe the spitter will save me. No, no, the spitter will not save me. Um, so the tank won't try to hit us, which is unfortunate, because the Leopard had won, the tank would come over and like smack us, and that would free us from the smoker. And it would hurt, but at least we'd be freed. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen on Leopard 2. They just kind of stand still and let you die. Um, there's a bug in this version of the game where if you get smoked, but the smoker doesn't like constrict you, like I'm not getting hit by the smoke right now, um, then you can only take one damage at a time. So no matter how many specials there are, or, or no, how many comments there are beating me up, I only take one damage at a time, which makes the death as slow as conceivably possible. That's rough. 
So, yeah, so you're just kind of chilling, unfortunately. And this is why everyone hates Crash Course. Because while it's only two maps and has the potential to have the fastest finale in the game, it also only has two maps and has the potential to be the fastest finale in the game. Uh, as well as is completely terrible in every way. It actually doesn't even matter that I'm in easy mode. I could vote to expert and I'd only take one hit for common swing. Like, per tick or whatever. It's really dumb. And if I voted to expert to die faster, then I had to play on expert, and that's not ideal, so. It's actually probably faster to just let it kill me slowly. Are console commands allowed? Yes. In fact, I'm going to turn on SV cheats right now and turn on no clip and just fly to the end. I don't know why I didn't think <laughs> of that. No, uh, some are. There is like a list of dedicated console commands that are allowed. Um, yeah, like changing. You maps can't and use stuff. like kick commands. Yeah, you could like change maps and stuff like that, um, but you can't like kick commands not allowed. That's a big one. A lot of people ask like, why don't you just kick the bots? And it's because well. You can kick more than just the bots. Oh, well, the tank got hit by the boomer bile. That's not good. I mean, it is good that the tank died, but... You guys open the door, please, somehow? I don't feel like this is going to work. Hmm. Time to go back and look for another boomer bile. I don't know how he got hit by that. It was so far away. That's fine. There are very many Burbal spawns on this map. Often. Bro, comments, please. Leave me alone. Don't beat me up. It's rude. There's one. There's a really high density Burbal spawns on this map, thank goodness, because it could be a big meme. Yeah, if you could use kick commands, then you could just literally bind, kick, hunter, jockey, smoker, charger, boomer, spitter to a key, <laughs> and then just press it every time you hear something. Wouldn't be the funnest speedrun to watch. It sure would be interesting. In the sense that it that would not true. be hard at all. No. Same reason we uh, don't play like Last Man on Earth mutation. People ask that a lot as well. Last Man on Earth mutation is like a alternate mode where uh, there are no bots. And well, there's a couple reasons we don't do that. Well, for one, bots are faster in a lot of situations as we've seen. Um, and then for two, there's no commons. So it's pretty boring. You know, commons are the things that make everything scary. If there, if there are no commons, then you almost never die to specials. Because usually the combination is like, oh no, there's a charger. Let me run away. Oh wait, I'm stuck on a million commons. And then you die, right? But if there's a charger and no commons, it's usually pretty easy, right? So that's why we don't do that. Also, it's slow. It'd be slower. Commons are fast too. Need them to common boost sometimes. Like good luck doing a sacrifice quickly without common effect. So we're just waiting here, waiting for the... Uh, Tank spawns and the horde spawns. There's the first tank. Out of my little corner here with my adrenaline. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, watch, hands behind my head, watching Bill die peacefully. Yeah, I'm not worried at all. I mean, uh, I was fully expecting this run to go catastrophically wrong. I don't think anyone's done an all-campaigns run, on at, at, like a marathon run before. I could be wrong, Patrick might have done one before. Um, but there's a reason for that. It's not the most marathon-safe run. <laughs> As you can see, there, things can go very, very wrong. But uh, it is really cool because it just shows off so much of the game. And if you're good enough, 
could guarantee a somewhat reasonable estimate. But it's definitely one of those games where it's like, oh yeah, the world record's two hours and three minutes. Let's set the estimate for like 240 to three hours, you know? It's just, just to be safe. Just in case everything goes completely catastrophically wrong. Which honestly, it's been going pretty good so far, so. I'm stoked. Yeah, PB's probably dead now. You never know, though. But PB's not that good. I believe. I think it's possible. That's one of the, that's one of the things, maybe, maybe. That's one of the things, oh, hello, sir. One of the things that's like kind of cruel about this game, your PB is not a reflection of your skill ever. Because there's so much RNG, you gotta grind for the PBs. So like, you might be capable of like a sub two hour run in all campaigns. But unless you're grinding for like six, seven months, there's no shot you're getting that. There's just no way. Like, you might be capable of a sub two hour, but you're gonna have like a 230 PB for a while probably. Just because that's just how the game works, you know? Um, that's why I love doing no resets of Left 4 Dead speedruns, because there's no pressure, you don't have to PB, you just have a good time. And quite frankly, the way your PBs die in this game is freaking hilarious, like 90% of the time. So, it's always like, I've literally never seen that before, like, what even is that insane meme moments where you get, like, charged off of the map, or, like, tank punched into a smoker, and then... You like get stuck and then there's no bots, so you just die when you're stuck. Go, yeah, like all sorts stop. of memes. It's great. As long as you're, you know, open to having it die. If you're really trying to grind for a PB though, that can be very frustrating. This game is known for molding. Excuse me, people. Get out of my face. This is Death Toll. Death Toll is that other campaign that has that really big time save on a tank spawn. And uh, of course I'll go for it if uh, I get the tank. It's not on this map, it's on the next map. The next map here, uh, bitrate drop warning. Not that I could do about it, but the bitrate is probably going to plummet for a little bit because for some reason on this version, there's a bunch of water on this map in the sewers. There's just no textures for them. There's no texture for the water, so it's going to be this bright pink and black checkerboard pattern. Which is going to absolutely annihilate the bitrate for a little bit, but I mean it looks fine, so... Please ignore the pink water. Oh, I almost just fell to my death, that was scary. But there is a trick we're going to do here. We're going to be skipping a crescendo event, as always, um, by standing in Barney's vomit. Oof. And getting a common jump here, hopefully. This tank spawns really bad. Oh, but we got really lucky. Okay, really unlucky as well at the same time. Thank you for getting me out of the water. I appreciate that. Um, here. This will work, right? No! no! I was too too far to the side. That would have been a really good backup track. Okay, nice, nice water, by the way. Thanks, Valve. <laughs> That's fine. I almost got it. A little bit too far to the side. Really unlucky tank spawn. Let's run it back. That just means we get more purple water. Thank God. I know I was you're afraid that it was gonna go away. This is the last map it's on, so. Just get to soak it in a little bit longer. I don't think I wanna soak in that purple water. I I do. I just wanna know what it feels like. You think it's like jagged? Is this checkerboard? It's like pretty stagnant too. Maybe like really dense water. There we go. Last time I got stuck in an invisible wall. Bonk. There we go. We shall return to lands and to high quality stream bitrate. 
and to tanks. Oh my god. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Spooky. On this episode of I Shouldn't Have Survived. <laughs> oh my god. That's really cool. That's one of those situations where like it was entirely in your hands and you made the right plays. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like, less experienced player probably would have died there. But I'm just that good. No, not really. But, you know, I, I was able to outplay the game even though I got completely boned on the RNG there and survived that somehow. Yeah, Death Toll has been really mean with the tanks, so hopefully uh, this is the only map in the whole game that doesn't have health kits at it, by the way. I don't know why. This game just trolls you. Um, this is the map where we have that really big potential time save if we get a tank and do the strat. Um, completely RNG if we get the tank, so you know I'll go for it if we get it. I actually had a run today that was on PB Pace where I got the tank. And I did the trick, and I got all the way to the end of the trick. It's a really long trick. And then you have to hit a B-hop around a corner, and you're like strafing around an invisible wall, and you're bounce B-hopping off of an invisible wall that you're standing on top of. And uh, you have to hit the B-hop and then strafe around the corner. And I missed, I missed the B-hop, and I just walked off the map and died. It was very sad. But uh, now I have practice, so if I get the tank spawn, surely. Watch your back. There's a hunter. Surely I'll hit it. It doesn't look like it though. We need a tank by around here. And we got a witch. Witches and tanks kind of take up the same spawning locations. So we got a witch right there, which means we probably won't get a tank. Pretty unlikely to get one by the end of the level now. Yeah. Unfortunate. That's okay. The strap for this is really cool anyways. Um, so there is a guy inside of this church. And he is not going to let us in because he's afraid that we're infected. Um, so he's going to ring the church bell and that's going to cause zombies to spawn and run at us um, until he gets overrun and he dies and then the door opens and lets us in. Um, but we're just going to chill up in the rafters where the zombies can't get us by doing a common jump off the piano. And now we're basically safe. Smokers are the only thing that really are scary. The comments would all just kind of gather around us like we have Fago or something. We're at the Gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> um, and just chill there. And we're just going to wait. This one actually is on a timer, so once the timer is up, the dude inside will die and let us in. We just got to live till then. Um, normally the guy inside dies and turns into a special infected. But on this version, for some reason, he doesn't turn into a special infected. I get that question a lot. They're like, is it supposed to be a special? And I had no idea because I never played this map on any other version. <laughs> so you just, you open the door and he's just gone. It's kind of nice. A little tranquil safe room. I'm going to step on all of these commons heads as soon as I'm able to. It's going to be great. I'm gonna have a platform to stand on for like two seconds before they all die. Where's this charger? I don't wanna drop down and instantly get charged. That would suck. There he is. He's just having a good time, running around. Oh yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. I agree, Bill. There can only be 30 commons on the map at a time, but as soon as you kill one, another one spawns somewhere else, so it feels like a lot more. Especially on maps where the nav meshing for their like pathing is really, really good. It can feel like there's a lot more. Ice hops. That was sick. Let's little skip over the, the roundabout there. Mm, normally we would hope that we have a bile or a pipe. Okay, thank you, game. Wow, it's seated or something. 
<laughs> to make this common jump easier. We're going to skip this crescendo event as well by doing a common jump over the top of this van. The bile and the uh, pipe bomb makes it a lot easier because the commons don't try to run to you and hit you. They run past you, which makes the climb better and more consistent. Very convenient. Spawn. Uh, spitter, please. I don't want to see your G-string. Nice random horde. Goodbye. Why'd I vote to expert? That's okay. <laughs> Instinct. In main campaigns, you're always like, as soon as you enter the safe room, vote to expert. Because you want to kill the bots immediately on the next map, then vote to act easy. Um, you don't want to do that in all campaigns because there's no upside. I don't have any bots right now. That's fine though. At least I did it before the safe room door closed so I could vote again the next map. The only thing that could affect is if there was a tank spawn right at the beginning of the map, you'd spawn with expert health, um, which would suck. But. Alas, that did not happen, so we're good. Dang. Pops are okay. But I'm losing them when I get speed. So uh, this finale, just a holdout finale. We're just going to have a lot of time sitting around, sitting on a rock. Waiting for commons to despawn. This one kind of sucks. It doesn't, like, so some god spots are better than others. Um... What makes them better is you know, more or less bad tank spawns, or tank spawns where the tank spawns and then it's actually able to see you. Um, because that means that you actually have to kill the tank, you can't let it die automatically. As well as like common spawns that are similar, where they can, they can see you, um, even if they don't know quite how to path to you, because if they're in their line of vision, then they won't despawn. Um, so this one kind of sucks, there really are no good god spots here. We're just going to climb up on this rock way out here and unfortunately there was only shotguns which means that I'm not gonna have any good way of killing a lot of these commons but thankfully there was a deagle so this guy for the ammo I don't have to worry about running out in my one deegs like I'm playing CS jumping around like Foon <laughs> why you use mouse people hop because you have to jump the very same tick that you hit the ground, and if you mistime it at all, you lose all of your speed. And the game only registers 30 ticks a second, so if you spam with mouse wheel, then you will overwhelm the game with inputs and it won't read them. So you have to time it correctly with a single input. You can use any key that you want, but you have to do like one input. Which makes every jump in a B hop in this game a uh, frame perfect trick at 30 FPS. We don't play at 30 FPS, but that's like the closest equivalent to analogy I could come up with, really. Are there a. Uh... They went tasks this game? Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I didn't interrupt you. But yeah, are there any tasks? Yes, there are some pretty cool tasks. The task video with commentary that you're talking about is probably my YouTube video, actually. <laughs> I didn't make the task, but I did a couple of task explanation videos on my YouTube channel. <laughs> are there uh, are there like tutorials for individual campaigns available? Um, I have a couple of YouTube videos that are video essays that also just so happen to like kind of double as tutorials for some of the campaigns. Um, and there are some like basic guideline tutorials, but it's really, really hard to make tutorials for this game because well, everything's random. So you know, every single run is completely different. Like, you're going to go to the same spots and do the same tricks for the most part. And there are tutorials for a lot of the tricks individually. But just watching those tutorials isn't really going to be enough. You kind of just have to play a lot, you know? Uh, it's one of the things that makes this run cool is that every player is kind of like a compendium, like an encyclopedia of different situations and experiences. And the more you experience, the more you learn how to play. So, like, Vogel, who's a world record holder, has 9,000 hours in this game. Unironically, dude's a machine, but he can like live like any situation because he's seen all of it. You know, he like has been in that situation and come up with a solution to not die there. And so he's like unkillable a lot of the time. 
But if you're just starting out, every single situation that you see is completely new, right? So you have to like overcome each of those new things and try to figure out how to overcome them each time, which is really fun because you're always seeing new stuff, um, but it can be very, very punishing. So if you are going to get interested in learning this game, don't expect to get a good time like anytime soon. It's going to take a really long time. Just enjoy the process of getting out because that's like just what this game's about. And that's what all the speedrunners in the community bond over is just how absolutely boned they get on their <laughs> runs. That's like half the speedrun discord. It's just like these insane Twitch clips of like these ridiculous deaths that no one has ever seen anything like that happening before and you get like three of them a day. So we're on Dead Air, which means there's only three campaigns left. Dead Air, uh, Dead Air, Blood Harvest, Cold Stream. So we're almost done. Which, uh, not bad pace, honestly. Pretty good. Um, Dead Air is a pretty straightforward map. Kind of just run to the end. But there are a few cool tricks. It has the hardest trick in the game mechanically on it. There is a trick on the uh, second map that we're going to be going for here. That has We have to hit five B-hops in a row. So five... 30 FPS frame tripping hops in a row um, to be able to clear a jump that skips a crescendo. Uh, I'm going to go for it. it. Saves a lot of time, actually. And it's not too difficult. We can get kind of screwed, though, depending on like if there's like a tank there and you know a bunch of specials and stuff. Makes it a lot harder to hit the trick. There is a backup that is a little bit slower, but a little bit safer. But I honestly don't really enjoy the backup very much. I think it's harder. So I'm just going to go for the... The crazy trick and we really i'm gonna heal here before i leave even though i have 92 hp because after we do the trick we're gonna do another trick where we drop off the building and catch ourselves on like a little piece of collision and we're gonna end up with like five hp even if we have a hundred health it takes so much damage from this fall that no matter what you're gonna be really low hp so i want to have as much as i possibly can especially since i don't have pills um, because i have to run to the safe room after making this drop um, and there's going to be commons, and there could be a tank down there and stuff, so it's really scary. Nice, we got an auto shotgun, that's lucky. Make it a little bit easier to deal with anything that comes up. So it's coming up here. I try to jump from building to building here. These B hops. Five. Nice, we got nice. it. Fog. And of course, there's a tank. I gotta jump off this really fast. Land here. 14 HP. Pop! Don't kill me! Ah! Ooh. This is fine. Nice. <laughs> that map is so scary. Okay, cool. That went great. <sighs> Pretty dope. Cool. Um, the rest of the of the run, basically, that was like the last super scary thing in the run. Obviously, it's Left 4 Dead, so, you know, I could just die at any moment spontaneously. But that was the last, like, big scary thing. Uh, here there is another crescendo, which you're supposed to shoot these gas cans here, and the gas cans will burn the pallets, and that'll let you progress. But you can actually just common jump on top of the pallets and then go over <laughs> and just leave. It's really funny because that was a thing in Left 4 Dead 1 as well, but it got patched in Left 4 Dead 1. But when they ported the maps to Left 4 Dead 2, they ported the old versions that didn't have the patches. So even though it's patched in Left 4 Dead 1, it was never patched in Left 4 Dead 2, which is just kind of hilarious. That same exact skip works in early versions of Left 4 Dead 1, but not late versions. Even though this patch just came out way before this game came out. Jockey? Jockey! Oh, nice jump. Uh-oh. Oh! Okay, we're fine. I could say this run has some baggage. Well, speaking of, speaking of, it's a nice car, though. 
And he kind of just rounded the corner and then domed you immediately. Yep, just like, boom, surprise, car. It's just like real life. Look both ways before crossing, chat. Gotta be careful out here. Cars just zooming. They're not looking out for you. Even in parking garages. It's okay, though. It was only, like, as far as you could possibly die in the level. So, it was only, like, the maximum time loss. Please, get off me. Thank you. To be honest, skill issue. I had better hops, wouldn't have mattered. SMH, bad runner, flaming RNG. Bad comments. For all my hops. I might be fatigued eventually. It's a long run. There's a safe place up ahead. Yay, we made it. How long have I been running Left 4 Dead 2 for? I just crested a thousand hours in this game. And almost all of it is speedrunning. I had a bunch of hours on console, but none of it was speedrunning. That was all just casual play. Um, I actually ran this game at mainline GDQ events twice. I ran it once um, for one of the online AGQs, I believe, main campaign solo, and I ran it at the last GDQ event, um, four-player co-op, with some of my friends from the community. Awesome run if you haven't yep. seen it. Um, it was a lot of fun. Oh no. Four-player run was sick. You, this, yeah, thank you. This this car can, it looks like it's going to hit you, but it actually just spawns invisible walls, and if you stand where the car is going to go, then you spawn inside the invisible walls, and then the car will just push you through them. Which is nice, um, but I kind of got trolled. Oh my god, how did I not shoot that witch? Uh, I <laughs> nice, nice charge, dude. Really good AI. <laughs> uh, AI director, by the way. Um, but yeah, those runs are really cool. I, I've been running Left 4 Dead for a while. It's my favorite speedrun. This category in particular is my favorite speedrun. All campaigns, legacy. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2. And I run a lot of games. I run uh, Devil May Cry, Resident Evil, Left 4 Dead, of course, Doom Eternal, Dead Space, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so if anyone's interested in watching some of those runs, hanging out with me, I do stream on Twitch almost every day. And uh, But yeah, lately I've been working on all campaigns, what I'm running right now. I want to get a Deathless run. That'd be sick. Um, and then... After that, I'm going to start working on getting my Devil May Cry 1 through 5 speed runs going. I was doing some trilogy runs before, Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3 in a row. Got the world record on that and got a pretty decent time. Um, but now I'm taking a break and going on some Left 4 Dead. And afterwards, I'll probably go back and do some DMC 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in a row. This is just another holdout finale. Gotta get it started and get into the god spot. This god spot's pretty funny because it's like so dumb. Like, how is this a god spot? The top, the hood of this truck? Oh, no, really? meshing. It's like not even remotely hard yeah. to get into. Yeah, it's just <laughs> just in the middle of the open. Just they for gore. No one tried it in the testing. 
Normally you gotta go up into some weird spot and hang off the edge of some geometry. Nope, just hang out in the hood of the truck. So how do these get found? Is it, is it just like, can you, is there a Navmesh viewer that you can use? Yes. So um, you can just like boot up console commands and uh, there's like a, I forget the console command itself, but you can like make all the Navmeshes appear and like you can walk around or have bots walk around and it'll like point to a square on the ground that has, it's like, this is the nav mesh and it'll say what type of nav mesh it is and stuff. Um, and you can just like walk around in the nav mesh viewer and like check to see if any of them have them. A lot of times people just find them on accident because they like hide out in a spot and oh, the commons are just AFK, you know? Um, a, a lot of them are pretty obvious. They're spots that like you might try to hide in anyways. Mm -hmm. This one, not so much. It's kind of in the middle of the open, but like you can see how someone would just kind of stumble onto this eventually. And once you know how they work, once you know that it's a nav mesh thing, then you can actually use the console commands to go and find them all. But in the last stand update, which is the newest update of the game, they got rid of like 99% of them. They like be nav mesh almost the whole game. It's crazy. Um, which is cool for, you know, it, having it work correctly, but for speed runs, it makes the finale a lot less interesting, unfortunately. Because as boring as sitting around here doing nothing is, it's a lot less boring than doing the same thing for two minutes and just... the whole time with a bunch of bots. At least in my opinion. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's one of those trade-offs of like... Do you want to complete the run or not? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and it's, uh, it's just mm -hmm. slow. You know, it, the finales are already the longest maps in the run with the god spots. And they're way more RNG if you don't use a god spot. Because, um, like, how far away comets spawn from you and how long it takes for you to kill them and all that stuff is essentially just random. Right? Like, is all their spawns are random, so it's like how fast you kill them is going to be random, but then what guns you have that's going to influence that, that's also random. And bot AI is random, so if you have bots helping you kill them, sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're completely useless. And so you have, like, crazy time save swings when doing uh, like that. Or normally is like 15, 30 seconds max time save swing on a finale and on uh, a version where you're doing god spots. But yeah, and we're also getting that extra time save from realism because the distance, normally like horde spawns when you start the finale and then a tank spawns after 10 second delay after you kill the horde and then another 10 second delay and then the common spawn again and then 10 second delay and then the horde. So that's... 20 seconds for every finale in Left 4 Dead 1. And if you're doing every Left 4 Dead 1 map, then you know, it adds up to about two minutes of time save. Um, which is quite a lot, honestly. Even for a two hour run, that's a lot of time save. Trade off is the commons are infinitely more annoying, but you know, the thing is we do for speed. So we're on the second to last campaign now. Um, it's Blood Harvest. We try to do them in order of amount of RNG and likelihood to reset. Hmm. Speaking of... Nice jockey. <laughs> I thought I would be able to outrun him. Can you at least walk me off the map? Please? So that I can die faster? No? Nope, I guess, I guess not. Guess you just get to get slapped. Yeah. The, uh, sometimes you can get freed from a special grabbing you. Like, a classic is you get grabbed by a jockey, and then you walk the jockey into a tank, and then the tank punches the jockey off you, and you're fine. That's like a legendary save. And then spitters can kill jockeys when they're on you. Like, they, sl they slash at you, but they do damage to you, and they do damage to the jockey. Um, also, if there's like a propane tank on the ground or something, and it's on fire, it could blow up and let you free, or if the... Uh, the jockey's on fire. It can burn to death before you go in capped. So there's a couple ways to save yourself, but mostly it's extremely circumstantial. Which is unfortunate, but that's fine. There's actually another funny thing that can happen. Um, so you need to have everything in the save room dead for the next level to start. Um, but you go down before, and there's like a fade out before the level restarts when you go down. So if you get jockeyed in the safe room after you close the door, if you can kill the jockey fast enough while you're incapacitated on the ground, 
then you can actually get the level to end before uh, the fade out happens for restarting the level. And so even though you're incapacitated on the ground, the level ends and you go to the next level. Which is a pretty funny way to save yourself. Yeah, one of those extremely niche, you like, to close the door. high play situations. Yeah, exactly. There's a million things like that in this game. Where it's just like, if only you knew that uh, you just have to like look at the longitude of exactly 65 degrees <laughs> Celsius and blah, 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 and then you can, you know, get out of the situation. But that's kind of the fun. It's really cool, like, you, people that like play this game a lot casually, and then they watch the speedrun, they're like, there's so much tech in this game I just had no idea about. Because you're using like all of it in the speedrun, because it's very unfair speedrun for the player. So you gotta take all of it to your advantage. It's through this tunnel. A lot of it's pretty useful casually too, honestly. Oh, nice tank. Let's get up that ladder. Oh, I griefed. It's fine. Sir. Oof, spooky. Safe house ahead. I just didn't want him to hit me with a tank rock. I also kind of wanted to show off. Just flexing a little bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Speaking of flexing, there's a really cool skip on this level. It's a, it's a trend you might have noticed uh, from the speed run. But um, we're going to be doing it. I, uh, for a long time, I thought this was exclusive to Left 4 Dead 1, but apparently it wasn't. I was just doing runs the other day, and the, so one of the other runners was like, why don't you do this trick? And I was like, it doesn't work in this game, right? It's like, no, it definitely does. Oh. Which uh, is cool, except for the fact that it makes the level like five times harder. Not that it needs to be harder. I'm gonna die. With... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he walking backwards at you? I, yeah, I don't. He uh, he's trying to flex too, I guess. He saw what happened last map, and he's like, "No, you can't just keep getting away with this. <laughs> There's no way." That's an unfortunate tank spawn. Just because, like, as you can see there, the commons are what make it hard, right? Like, if, if it was just the tank, that would have been easy. But I just, everyone's trying to give, like, give me a sign of their autograph, like, giving me hugs and stuff. I just can't get away. The crowd, it's too dense. That's uh, that's why commons are the actual scariest enemy in this game. Not boomers, not spitters, but commons. Hey, tank. See, look, he's harmless. There's no commons around. So normally you're supposed to blow up this bridge and then it falls over and lets you like go up it. Um, but what you can do is you actually scale the side of it and do two crouched bunny hops to get extra speed and height on the edge of the railing here and launch all the way to where it's supposed to send you at the end, like that. Nice. Nice. Second try. Very good. Um, and just skip that whole thing. It really doesn't save that much time, but it's super cool. Also, rip, rip cow. R.I.P. Yeah, that tank said, door stuck! <laughs> door stuck! But actually, we had our own version of door stuck recently. Um, one of the runners was doing a run, and they like were b-hopping, and they like got to the safe room door, and they closed it, and then they closed it like on themselves in a way no one's ever seen before, where the door got them stuck, and then they were stuck and there was no bots, so it killed them after 10 seconds. So they get to the end of the level, on good pace, and then just literally door stuck. Just at, just door stuck for 10 seconds and then they die. <laughs> it was kind of hilarious. Yeah, I've been paranoid this whole time about you and, closing uh, the safe room door on yourself, because like, I always had a problem with that when I was playing the game. Oh yeah, you could definitely do that. And some, some maps, way more likely than others. Hey look, another tank. Oh, oh that would have been sick. Pretty sure that would have worked too. Over the map. Excuse me, sir. Man, I, I don't know about this path thing. This path thing spawns the horde. Been telling, people have been telling me this is bad. I don't believe them. 
Having fast B hops here is probably better. That's okay though. What was that explosion? Hey, I called it that nice. nice. <laughs> Alright, last map of Blood Harvest, thank god. I hate this campaign. And then we get to do Cold Stream, which is everyone's favorite campaign. It's probably the most played campaign in Left 4 Dead 2. Cold Stream. It's fine. <laughs> There's a reason that I save it for last. I just don't want to play it. And you know, I don't get very many runs this far into the game, so... You don't have to play Cold Stream very often. You put it last. It's also pretty easy, and like, very little RNG, so... Makes it a nice pick. Grenade. Was Boomer Bio in Left 4 Dead 1, or is that a, is that a solely Left 4 Dead 2 thing? That is a Left 4 Dead okay. 2 thing. Same with melee weapons. Yeah, I knew that part. Uh, Left 4 Dead 1 also has... Uh, yeah, Left 4 Dead 1 also has... Um, unlimited melee? There's no cooldown on melee, so you can just melee forever. Which, you might think... Wow, that's actually broken. I don't really remember that. Uh, and yeah, it's because you absolutely needed it in Left 4 Dead 1 because the commons are like a million times more annoying. Left 4 Dead 1 runs are rough. And the commons are a big reason for that because they're like even worse than Left 4 Dead 2 commons. By, by a lot, actually. They like teleport in front of you. The reach is like twice as long. They're goddamn monstrosity, honestly. Uh, so this is the god spot here. It's kind of risky, uh, but it's the only god spot. The reason it's risky is if you get a smoker up there and the smoker pulls you, you can actually get stuck here. Like I, if I wanted to, I could like go crouch and like get stuck there, and then I'll die after ten seconds because I'm stuck and there's no way to get out of it. So if you get smoked, they'll pull you into the stuck spot, and then even if you free yourself, you die. <laughs> so. Be careful with that. Thankfully, we're not playing on expert, so it's not a huge deal. But if you're doing like expert realism runs of this level, oh boy, that's really scary. It's like the number one thing that kills you here is uh, getting smoked like that. Nice wall bang. Or the uh, <clears throat> no wall hawks. So I'm assuming there's, there's two different categories, so, so like easy and then expert, and then realism, non realism. Yeah, so the no, so it's. Expert Realism is one category where you do everything on Expert Realism, and then the other one is any okay. difficult. Because if you were to just play on easy, then that means you have to have the bots the whole time, right? And so that's really annoying. Um, so any difficulty, meaning you can switch to any difficulty whenever you want, and then the other one being Expert Realism, where you have to play on Expert Realism the whole time. Yeah. Um, those runs, obviously, less common, because it's the same run, but with way more RNG, basically. <laughs> and there's already a lot of RNG. Yeah, so this is... It's a mouthful, but it's... Left 4 Dead 2 solo. Uh, all campaigns, legacy, any difficulty. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but... Yeah, I forgot to... Uh... We just call it... Legacy alts or lol short. As you said, I forgot to put the uh, the all difficulties thing in the title or uh, any difficulty. Oh no, it's fine. It's it's implied. Yeah. I'm not running extra realism through that. <laughs> also, super quote unquote marathon unsafe. Man, oh yeah, yeah. Like this, this is already pretty marathon unsafe. But doing extra realism, this. Uh, so I've done. That's kind of a thing I like to do sometimes. Like, we did a, a community race where we got a bunch of people together and did an expert realism all campaigns race because, you know, yeah, for that'll fun. be fun. Uh, yeah, and I think it took me six, no, it took me five, four hours and 50 minutes because I just died and died and died and died and died. I'm better now than I was then, but still, like, it's just complete RNG and so punishing. I mean, honestly, that doesn't sound uh, too bad. It, like, compared to, you know, your, well, your time for this. Technically, it should be the same speed or even faster than any difficulty. Right? Because it's like, it's the same thing. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about bots ever because you play an expert the whole time. Um, but then it's just way more risky. Right? So, in theory, it should be just as fast as... Um, the 203 world record 
uh, for any difficulty. Obviously, in execution, it's not that fast because uh, good luck actually getting a run like that. Um, but the world record for Expert Realism All Campaigns is actually like a 220, which is insane. It's probably like the most impressive run in the whole leaderboard for this game, honestly. Like, that for a long time, actually, I think still, that's better than my any difficulty PB. Which is just absolutely insane. I, I like can't even fathom that. Hello. So yeah, there's actually a few world records set in this game on extra realism. Because so any difficulty means that you can play any difficulty, right? So I just got wrecked. Um, so that means that extra realism actually falls under any difficulty because. If you can play on any difficulty, then you can also play on extra realism the whole time if you really wanted to. So there are a couple of runs that are actually world record for both any difficulty and extra realism, because it's faster on extra realism than any difficulty. Um, like a couple of individual levels, especially the ones on versions where you can't vote every three, three minutes or yeah. once a map, you know? Um, and so it's like, you just get good and play on extra realism, because like may as well, two categories at the same time. But that was unfortunate. I just got kind of wrecked by that hunter. Oh, so, so why does this say Cold Stream Beta? Because this is the release version of Cold Stream, and the earliest version of Cold Stream, Cold Stream was in Beta. Um, Cold Stream is actually a map that was added in by a community vote. This is the only map in the run that's not made by Valve employees, uh, and it shows. <laughs> um, the map's not that good. But it is what they voted for in the community back when they voted for it, so it's in the game. And for whatever reason, when it launched, it was in a beta. I have no idea where the smoker is, because there is bushes everywhere. Which is one of the reasons why this map is not very liked. There's trees and shrubbery everywhere, you can't see anything. Are there other fan-made maps that people run? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of workshop maps that people like to run for fun and stuff. Not very com hmm. not very competitive. That, so this is why this game is really good. Especially in particular the way jockeys are programmed. Mm. Flawless. <laughs> I definitely... So what happened there is the jockey jumped at me. I meleeed him. You can see him stumble in the air because I meleeed him. But he landed on top of the common infected's head. And when... A jockey or a hunter or a smoker is stumbling and they lose elevation and land on solid ground again, they instantly get their ability back. <laughs> so the jockey landed on the head, regained his ability, and immediately grabbed me again. Because this game is really. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah, so you gotta watch jockeys and hunters when you're meleeing them near elevation changes because sometimes they'll stumble off of a desk or something, hit the ground, immediately pounce you. Feels good, man. Yeah, I guess that does make a lot of sense. Feels real like, good. I, there were some times when I would like melee a hunter and it would stumble and it would like, I guess, fall off a, a short lip or something and it instantly kill me. Yep. And you're just like, what? What did I do wrong? And it's like, the thing that you did wrong was put left for dead yeah. too, my friend. Sad to say. <laughs> Skill issue. Yeah, skill issue, dude. Wow. How, dude? I'm getting wrecked on cold stream. I, they heard me. They said, "What? Well, you don't like this map? It's time for you to play it more." I don't know how that melee didn't hit, but. And I assume voting to, that's to restart rough. the campaign would bring the bots back. It would not, but I mean, it's gonna save like yeah. two seconds. And then I won't have my vote either, so it's like if I need if I needed to vote for some reason. I guess I could, but the best part is you get to watch this sick cinematic intro every time. With the the big cheesy letters in the background, cold stream. Also the comments can hit you during this sometimes, which is hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a shotgun this time. And you're just standing still, like literally nothing you can do, can't control, and the comments just beat you up. It's taking your lunch money. It'd be pretty funny if you could if not only could they be you, but you could move during it. So like, that would be great. Be, you had to 
navigate it completely blindfolded and like backwards. That would be amazing. I would love that. There's something similar to that in uh in Left 4 Dead 1. Like if you vote to change maps in a certain way in Left 4 Dead 1, uh the bots all spawn inside of each other. And you gain control instantly and you don't get like an intro cinematic. It's pretty awesome because it lets you uh all the bots will just be inside of each other, and in that game, you do insane damage to bots. So you can just instant kill all three bots with like one bullet. If you do the, the map switches correctly like that. And then just immediately go. There's literally zero downtime, it's pretty sick. It's pretty nice seeing Crowd surf? still melee while you're opening the door. Yeah, that's a this version exclusive thing, actually. It's a bug. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Also, it's a crowd surf. <laughs> that's yeah. the strat there. It is a sick crowd surf. Can you guys hear me? All right. So now the game's going to throw a flashbang at us. This map's really good. But thankfully, there's guaranteed shotgun spawn here. And we're going to be navigating completely blind here because uh, the trees are going to actually destroy our vision. For some reason, the map editor really liked foliage, like a lot. And scripted tank spawns. There's going to be a couple of those. Um, there's going to be one here at the top. You're supposed to climb this ladder and stuff and go up top, but actually just... If you can see, which I can't, you can just do this. I'm griefing. It's happened to me earlier today, too. Never happened to me before, but then it happened today. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Tank. We'll be back on track. Do, uh, do IL uh, campaign runs ever, like, how, do they involve, like, getting tank punched across, like, stuff? Yes. Like, I assume those are ridiculous. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you've seen me get some, like, go for some tank punch strats and stuff, especially the ones that save a lot of time. Um, in ILs, like, yeah, you're grinded for those, for sure. Um, mostly they're, like, the specific ones that save... They don't save that much time to just get regularly punched, because if you keep your hops, in theory, it should be faster, right? But the ones where you could like, skip events, um, especially the ones where you, like, skip waiting around for something to show up, those ones, yeah, like, super... In ILs, like, you're grounded for those. Um, a lot of times there's alternatives to the tank boost as well, like... On Death Toll, there's that tank skip I was talking about where you can skip the uh, the event there where you're waiting for the dude to open the church door. You can actually do it with a bunny hop line, but it's so insanely difficult that until pretty recently, no one had done it in a run until this dude Freiburger just showed up out of nowhere and did it in an actual run, which is insane. It's like the, oh my God. It's like the craziest thing on the leaderboard besides that ER all's run. This man just comes out of nowhere and hits like the most insane hop line. You have to hit like six or seven bunny hops in a row, all crouched with really good strafes to make it up this thing. And then on top of that, there's like a big out of bounds thing you gotta do afterwards. It's actually ridiculous. There are plenty of individual level run exclusive tricks in this game where it's like this is not worth going for in any other circumstance except for in the individual level just waiting for the game to get to that point where it's like oh gotta do the IL strats uh dude it's it's getting there for me in campaigns honestly there's a skip called charger skip where uh, you actually can skip the barns event in single player in dark carnival it saves 40 seconds but you have to get a throwable that can kill a charger, and then you have to get lucky enough to get a charger, and then have the charger... You set up a table against the wall, then have the charger charge you from the other side of the wall, and kill him with the throwable after you're charged. And if you do it right, it'll pull you through the wall, and it skips the event and saves like 40 seconds. But it's like... You gotta get there, wait till 35 seconds are over, then gamble that you get a charger spawn, and then the charger has to spawn on the right side of the wall, and you have to have a throwable. And then there has to be like no commons around because you got to set up a table and all this meme stuff. And then you got to actually hit the trick. And it's four maps into the hardest IL yeah. in the game. And it's, it's just like, no one goes for this. But literally, 
No one goes, even the world record holder doesn't go for this in like main campaigns, you know. Um, but it's getting to the point where, you know, if he's on a run that's like already not that good, he'll just go for it in mains. And he's had a couple runs of mains that had it in it, but it's just like literally no one else is. Everyone's like, nah. There's there's no reason to go for that. It's like there's just no way. How long is main campaign? But it'll happen eventually. Main campaigns is about uh, record is forty six okay. fifteen. So it is quite a bit faster than all campaigns, obviously, because it's way less content. But um, it's a really nice pace run. It's not too not too long, not too short. But yeah, it's got it's forty nice seconds variety is huge for that. Yeah, yeah, forty seconds for like a forty-six minute run, like absolutely huge. But even that, I mean, there's way more time saved than forty seconds on just bunny hops alone. I mean, like in theory, on the first map of highway, you can get a sub one minute if you just have insane bunny hops the whole time. Um, but like most people's time there is like one thirty and above, just because like it's it's. You know, it's the first map in the run, but you're not going to sit there and grind all day till you get like a one minute flat and then, you know, you got to do the whole rest of the run still. So just the movement alone is so much time saved. I'm not fitting through there. That's not good. First person in history to die of this cold stream tank? Dang, Go. that's Probably should have thrown the file, but I don't think the comments would have stopped him in time. I don't know how I can fit there. That dude was chonky. Just blocking the way. Oh, wrong safe. That's fine. This is the last map of the run, by the way. So we're closing in on the finish here. Almost done. So many deaths on Coldstream. Coldstream is like a completely free map that you never die on. So I guess, you know, marathon luck. Yeah. It's usually how it goes. Heard you uh, talking trash. He was like, no. I yeah, get dude. Coldstream is very upset. Yeah. Coldstream is, is pretty bummed. He's like, wow. I thought I was just a one of the guys. You know? It turns out everyone hates me. That's okay, though. I didn't want to PB anyways. Smile. Not that I was going to. No, I mean, it, you know, I, I sometimes think it's good to even, like, you know, have rough runs sometimes because it, it shows off, like, yeah, oh, like, yeah, runners mess up and that happens. And that's just yeah, that's why one of my favorite runs. Yeah, exactly. That's why, especially it, if you do everything perfect, then it's like, oh, that was easy. Yeah, this game's easy. But especially with a game that's really hard like this and a category that's really hard like this, you know, dying, not the worst thing. That's why one of my favorite GDQ runs I ever did is I did a Left 4 Dead 2 main campaigns run for uh, West Side uh, Marathon. I forget what it was called. Uh, but the West Coast one. Oh, yeah, yeah. West and Coast Weekend. West Coast Weekend, that's what it was. And I did main campaigns and it was like a perfect, flawless run. Except for I died like four times on Parish. Uh, and that's time. Uh, but... Yeah, it was like perfect the whole way through, except for this one section where I died like six times. So it was like, aha, this is what a good run looks like. And also, it could go catastrophically wrong, too. Yeah. Well, that was time. GG. Well, where can uh, people find you if they want to watch more Left 4 Dead or look, watch more general? Uh, so my name's Waifu, uh, twitch.tv forward slash waifu. And also, I make video essays and post. Uh, speedrunning challenge videos and stuff on YouTube, on Waifu Runs on YouTube and Waifu Runs TV and Waifu Runs Archive. Um, but yeah, I stream most most days. Lately, I've been doing a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 all campaigns, so if you enjoyed this run, that's what I've been doing mostly. Um, also, big speedrunner of Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, uh, Doom Eternal, if you're into any of those games, super fun time, love to have you. And uh, just shout out to GQ, thanks for having me. This one went pretty good, so I'm stoked. Yeah. And uh much love. Yeah, thank you for thank you for coming on. All right. So my pleasure. Yeah.
So if you're uh, just tuning in, sorry, this is the end of the stream, but uh, if you missed the Left 4 Dead 2 run or the Paper Mario randomizer from earlier, uh, go to youtube.com slash games quick to check out uh, the recordings of all that. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to check this out live, go to twitch.tv slash games done quick uh, for live content weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gifts, gift subs, and bits uh, cheered on the GDQ channel help support this weekly content. Uh, so please consider subscribing if you like these hotfix shows and you want to help us out. And that's all for tonight. We'll be heading off here. And uh, tomorrow we have Mercy Kill, followed by Never Before Seen, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. So we'll see you then.